Hello, guys. Welcome back to Mezzon African Motives. Uh, still working on uh, mathematics info. Uh, so in this platform, we shall be focusing on the complex numbers. Uh, so so that you'll be able to attempt typical questions like this one that you see here. Uh, so these are the typical questions that you'll be given. Uh, for you to simplify uh, so many typical questions that you have. So what you're going to do is to work from uh, the beginning. What exactly is it that we understand uh, on complex numbers so that you'll be able to attempt those typical questions that I have been showing you on the screen. So uh, actually the complex number part is uh, being introduced, uh, which is the use of the J notation. Uh, which was actually not taken from the J notation uh, in actual sense. Uh, this uh, actually is uh, from the imaginary numbers, okay? If we are dealing with, uh, let's say, square root of a 4, we understand these numbers exactly like uh, we know that square root of 4, this is going to give us a plus or minus 2. Square root of 3, yes, we cannot simplify this, but from our calculator, we can simplify and obtain a certain decimal uh, that you're going to have from there. So I want you to just see what I'm trying to say here. If we are to simplify this, yes, we can simplify the square root of 3, which is going to give us a decimal, 1,732 and so on. Meaning to say these numbers, they can be simplified even though we are not are obtaining exact values, but we can simplify uh, the square root of this from our calculator. But now if we refer to numbers such as a uh, square root of minus four like this, if you take a consideration, this is our square root of four, but here we've got square root of minus four, which is not a four. If we are to take it from our calculator back, I want us to see from our calculator what is going to happen this time. If we are to simplify uh, the square root of negative 4 like this, this is square root of negative 4, automatically giving us met error to say this cannot uh, be simplified. We cannot simplify this in mathematics. That is the square root of a negative number cannot be simplified. So now with this uh, part that cannot be simplified, which is the square root of a negative, that is where we are introducing the J notation to say, all right, let us say I is going to represent, I here is going to represent the square root of a negative one, which is the smallest uh, number that we are having in this case in terms of whole numbers, which is one. So if I is representing square root of I is just from, imaginary numbers we talk about imaginary from the imaginary part we are saying from the imaginary this is these are imaginary from like in, in imagination we, it, these are not exact values it's an imagination that we are making to say let the square root of minus one represent i so i was just taken from the first letter which is from the imaginary part that is where this uh, I is taken. Not to say it's something that is very, very important. It was just taken from the imaginary. So just because uh, this I, us in engineering, we focus more with this I representing current. Remember, if you're talking about current, we use the letter I. So that is why in engineering, we have the, the introduction of the letter J, the next letter that we just have from I, J, K, and so on. So we're just using the letter that is next to I to, to just uh, help us not to confuse with our engineering with the letter I for current. So that is why we end up using the letter J in place of I. So this is just one and the same thing. Whether you choose to use I or you choose to use a J is just one and the same thing. It's simply the square root of a negative one. So meaning to say, with this now, we can try now to suppress our calculations with the knowledge that the square root of a negative one is represented by a J or is represented by an I like this. So meaning to say that if I am now sim given to simplify the square root of minus four, since I cannot simplify this, I can separate this from our laws of uh, sets. We know that from our laws of sets, if we are given the square root of two numbers, we can separate uh, from the square root of A, B like this. These can be given as the square root of A 
multiplied to the square root of b, meaning to say this can be separated from the square root of minus 4 as it is to the square root of negative, which is negative 1. So you're going to have the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 4. Remember, negative 1 times 4, we get negative 4. What we want is to have the square root of negative 1. So knowing that, I, I, I can represent this square root of negative 1 with i, or I can represent with j. So in this case, I'm going to focus on the j uh, as we are into engineering, guys. Uh, I, yes, we can use i. Even in the syllabus, they can give us questions using i. So do not panic. You just wait with i as it is. But mostly, let us focus on the j. Okay, so that is uh, the j part from the square root of uh, negative 1. Multiply to the square root of 4. The square root of 4, we know it before we talked about this. We said the square root of 4 is plus or minus 2. So meaning to say we are going to multiply our answer to the square root of 4, which is plus or minus 2. So that means j times plus or minus 2 can be written as plus or minus 2j like this. Or plus or minus j2, plus or minus j2 like this. It's just one and the same uh, application that you can use uh, in your simplification. So that is what you're simply having. Or we can represent with i, like I said. So meaning to say we can write this as uh, plus or minus 2i like this, which is just one and the same thing. So now, instead of us separating this in every calculation to write square root of minus one, square root of four, instead of us separating, since we know that once there's a negative, our answer is going to carry a J. So that means if you are given to simplify uh, expressions such as uh, the square root of negative 25 like this, we simply know that, okay, this is a square root where we know that we are going to have two possible values plus or minus. But since I am having a minus like this, I'm going to know that the square root of that minus is a J. Then the square root of 25, which is the plus or minus that we got in this case, which is a 5. So meaning to say our answer is plus or minus J5, or you can write as plus or minus 5J like this, which is one and the same thing, or you can use I in your simplification, like I said. So with this knowledge, guys, you can simplify so many questions. All right, so the first part that we are going to have is the simplification in J notation or in this J operation that we are Having. So we are going to have the simplification, uh, simplification in J notation. So the J notation is the one that we are referring here as uh, the I, like the imaginary part. All right. So this J notation that we are talking about, it gives us or it leads us to a simplification whereby we are saying a complex number can be represented in what we refer to as the rectangular form so we have got uh, the rectangular form or the cartesian form so this is referred as the cartesian form in a uh, in another way so we are saying a complex number can be written in what we refer to as the rectangular form or what we refer to as uh, the the cartesian form is simply one and the same uh, thing in this case. So a rectangular form is whereby we are saying a complex number z is given in the format of a plus or minus uh, j b like this. So some they just use x here x plus or minus j y like this. It's just one and the same thing as long you know what this part represents and what this part uh, represents. So if you are to take note here, the a part that we are seeing here, this a part here is representing the real term. So this is a real term, a real number that we are, we are going to have a real number there. So that is the A part of our, of our simplification. So whenever we see this format, whenever we see this format, the A part that we see here is re being referred as the, the real term. Whereas the JB part, where there is a J in this part, this JB Part is representing our imaginary. This is where there is a square root of minus one. And remember, I was saying J is representing an imaginary. This is for imaginary, I, O, or J. So where there is a J, that's the imaginary part of a complex number. So this is your imaginary term. So this is the imaginary term or the imaginary part of uh, the complex number written in rectangular 
form. All right, so we shall talk about this uh, later on where we shall be seeing even the simplification that we are going to have addition, subtraction. Uh, how do you even represent on an argand diagram? So this is the purpose of this video so that you understand all those things. All right, so like I said, we've got the simplification of the J notation that is in J notation. So uh, we understand what we refer to as the rectangular form, the one that we are going to convert to a polar form uh, later on. All right, so if we are given a complex number, in this format, that's our rectangular or Cartesian form. So the first simplification that I want you to understand is when you are given a normal, uh, like a quadratic equation. Remember, we were used to solve quadratic equations. Let us just take a normal example, to like to solve. Uh, this one does not um, apply complex numbers, just a normal equation. Let's say you are being asked to solve uh, x squared minus 25 is equal to zero. This was a normal equation that we used uh, in our normal algebra where we can transpose or we can even factorize since this is a difference of two squares or we can take this to the other hand, the negative 25 transpose to the right hand side, it becomes a positive. So this is going to give us x squared is equal to positive 25 to remove the square, introduce the square root both sides, meaning to say our x is going to be plus or minus the square root of 25, which is a five. But now if we are talking about the complex number type of uh, equations, you will be given a similar equation to solve, like for an example, x squared plus 25 is equal to zero like this. If you are to, to check properly, on the left-hand side, we cannot factorize this. There is no sum of two squares where we are going to have a plus, then we have two brackets or so forth. So we are going to transpose the positive 25 to the right hand side so that it becomes a negative. So meaning to say x squared is going to be equivalent to negative 25. Once you are given this part, we introduce the square root, just like the previous part to remove the square, we are going to introduce the square root both sides, which is going to be the square root of x squared, which is x. But in this case, now check what we are having. We are having a negative under the square root. Meaning to say we are limited now. We no longer have an exact term like what we had before. So we are now back to the complex numbers to say whenever we are given a square root of a negative, it is going to be represented with a j. So this is going to be a j. Then the square root of 25, just like the previous part, it's a 5, which is plus or minus 5. So here we are going to have j uh, plus or minus j5 or plus or minus 5j. So meaning to say we've got two solutions that we are taking uh, from this j, which is x is equivalent to j5 or x is equivalent to negative j5 in this case. That is from the negative part that is under the square root. It's just like a normal equation that we used to before, but this equation now when you are simplifying it, you are going to have a negative under the square root. So they can give you a normal quadratic. When I'm saying a normal, uh, like uh, the, the one that you are used to. So this is the first part that we are having in a uh, uh, rectangular form. Like for an example, we are given to solve, uh, solve the equation. Let's say we are given the question uh, here. Solve the equation. Uh, that is uh, 2x squared. 2x squared uh, plus 3x plus 5 is equal to 0. This is a normal equation that you'll be thinking to say, okay, let me just apply my quadratic formula and so forth. All right. So let's say you are to solve this. You do not, pause. you are solving, you do not know what's going to happen later on. So you solve exactly the way that you are used to before. That is, uh, this is a quadratic equation. So we know that x is equivalent to minus b plus or minus the square root of uh, b squared minus 4ac, everything over 2a. So if we are to take note, this is our a, the coefficient of x squared. So our a in this case is going to be equivalent to 2. All right, our b, the coefficient of x, which is uh, 3, then c is the constant, which is uh, in this case, it's a 5. So if we are to substitute into our formula, we are going to see that x is equivalent to negative b. So that is minus uh, b, which is uh, negative 3 plus or minus the square root of uh, b squared. So this is going to be our b, which is 3. So that is going to be 3 squared minus 4 times a, which is 2 times uh, c in this case, our c, which is 5. All right. So everything in this case is uh, over 2a. So everything here is affected by 2 times 
a in this case, which is uh, 2. So if you are to simplify, uh, remember what I always say, that when you are given an equation like this, do not solve direct on your calculator. This is math, guys. Do everything stage by stage. All right, what am I trying to say? I want you to see what I'm trying to say here. Let me show you this part of uh, the screen here. All right, remember what we had before. This is what most of us do. We just take on our calculator, negative 3 plus... Uh, the square root of uh, 3 squared like this, uh, that is 3 squared minus 4 times 2 times 5 like this, everything over 2 times 2, which is 4. Okay, let me write the way that you do, guys. 2 times 2. This is what most of you do. Okay, once you have done this, you see your calculator is giving you met error. To show this equation cannot be solved direct the way that it is. So if you are in exam, most of us now, we tend to say, ah, since this is mess error, let me just go and remove this negative. Some of us, we just come here, remove a negative and this and simplify, you get a one. You write this answer. This is wrong. This is totally wrong. You do not correct the way that your calculator is because it gives you a mess error. To, this is showing you to say this simplification that you are working does not exist. So what are you going to do? This is why I say always try by all means to simplify the part that is under the square root first. This part that is under the square root. Do not use the square root. Just, just this part under the square root. So meaning to say you simplify this, you are going to obtain x, which is equivalent to negative 3 plus or minus the square root of. If you simplify this part alone under the square root, just this part alone, you are going to obtain negative 31 like this, everything over 2 times 2, which is 4. So by simplifying this stage by stage, the quadratic formula, guys, is something that we are, we are used to. So most of us, we just take it for granted. We, we are used to, we just take our calculator direct to simplify. No, this is not it stage by stage so that you see what is happening if you check now you can see that all right there is a negative under the square root what does this negative tell you it tells you that no matter how i use my calculator it cannot simplify this negative because we do not have the square root of a negative number so that is where you tell yourself okay this is same as the square root of negative that one is the same as the square root of negative one times the square root of that one Yes, this one cannot be simplified, but we can just use J to represent this. So this is going to give us a J uh, plus or minus the square root of that one. We cannot simplify the square root of that one. Yes, we can use our calculator and get a decimal, but you can just leave it like that. So meaning to say, once you see the J part, once you see the minus, this minus under the square root, know that the next stage is the introduction of the j so this is what you're going to have at the end uh so the answer is going to be x is equivalent to negative three plus or minus j to represent the square root of a negative but we are having a 31 that we cannot simplify direct unless you want to use it as a decimal yes you can all right everything here is over four remember the format that we talked about before we said this is a rectangular format where our answers should be given in the form of a plus or minus jb which is the same as x plus or minus jy they can tell you or they can even mention leave your answer in this format meaning to say you have to separate from this part here we have to separate our solution in the form of a plus or minus jb so here we can separate our solution as uh, as the format that we talk that z is equivalent a plus or minus jb like this we've got the real term and the imaginary part of our solution so meaning to say this is going to be x is equivalent negative 3 separated with 4 so it's negative 3 over 4 plus j square root of 31 over 4 or another x is going to carry a negative from plus or minus j another one is going to carry a negative so x is equivalent to minus 3 over 4 so 4 is separated on each part this part carries 4 this part also carries a 4 all right so this is going to be plus j square root of 31 over 4. So like I said, 
Yes, you can write it as a decimal. If you simplify it as a decimal, you're going to obtain something like uh, negative 0, 0.75 here. This is going to give you something like 1.392. So I, this one is, is, is it's your choice. It depends with what you want. You can leave your answer like this, or you can write your answers as uh, decimals. It's just um, one and the same thing. All right, so guys, this is uh, the first part that you might be given. You'll be given a normal equation that you are used to solve under quadratic equations where you apply your quadratic formula, but be careful on how you apply your quadratic formula because this part here, there is going to be a negative whenever you are dealing with a, a complex number. So uh, this part I leave unto you guys to make more questions on solving uh, these typical equations. I leave uh, this unto you to solve as much questions. But if you've got a question that is still troubling you on solving these equations, let us know on the comment section so that we can help each other. All right, the other part that you'll be given is on the evaluation or still on the simplification, you'll be given a condition to evaluate uh, expressions or terms such as, uh, let us just say, j to the exponent of five or j to the exponent of 29, j to the exponent of 100. How do we, how do we play around these in our J notation? All right. If we consider back, let us take back what we, what we referred before. We are saying a J is representing a square root of a negative one. So if a J is representing a square root of a negative one, let us square this and see what is going to happen. If we square both sides, this part, it's an equation. We square both sides, meaning to say, we have got j squared in this case. All right. The square root of negative 1 squared gives us negative 1. Remember from our complex numbers, uh, it states that uh, the square root of a times the square root of a is equal to a. That is, if a number is multiplying itself like this under the square root, uh, we just take that term as it is. So we have got square root of negative 1 times square root of negative one. So we are going to obtain negative one in this case. All right. So if J squared is giving us negative one, where there is a J squared is same as minus one. It means in order for you to simplify these complex terms of this nature, what you need is to write these complex terms in the form of uh, the J squared, because it is the one that we know that it is equal to a negative one. So there are terms like uh, we have got uh, even, we have got even terms, that is uh, exponents, or let me just write as exponents here, we can have even exponents. All right, we've got e even exponents, whenever there's an even exponent, uh, let us start with those terms, like yeah, we've got even exponents. Let's take an example, we want to simplify j to the exponent of 10. If you are to simplify j to the exponent of 10, you write this in terms of j squared, which is this part that we know. So we're going to write this in terms of j squared, but it must be raised to a certain exponent so that it gives us this 10 that we see here. Remember guys, this was j to the exponent of 10. So whatever that we are supposed to do on this side, we are writing it in terms of j squared, but we must have the j squared. So when you are given an even number like this, it's an advantage. What you simply do is you divide 10 divided by these two, meaning to say that's 10 divided by two, which is five. So meaning to say here, I'm supposed to have an exponent of five because you're asking to say yourself, which number am I supposed to multiply to two to get this 10? So it's five times two, which gives us a 10. Remember from your complex number, I mean, from your uh, exponents, x to the exponent of a, to the exponent of b like this gives us x to the exponent of a b where you multiply the exponent with the exponents together so this is the same approach that you are having two by five that's a 10. so meaning to say that we have written this in an expanded form of the j squared this is the expanded form that we know it's equivalent where there is a j squared I have got a negative one. So this is same as I've got a negative one in place of J squared. I'm going to substitute negative one. Being raised to the exponent of five, this five is not affected. 
So negative one to the exponent of five, you can even use your calculator, but this one, guys, is simply negative one times five times. So this is going to remain as a negative one. So our answer there is going to be a negative one. So take note what is happening, guys. Okay? Take note of what is happening in this case. When you, you are writing in terms of j squared, like it can be any exponent as long. Okay, let's take this 100 here. This j to the exponent of 1 is an even exponent here. It's an even number. Even numbers, we're talking about 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Those numbers exactly divisible by, by 2. Let's say we are asked to simplify j to the exponent of 100, like this one. So what you're going to do is to write it in terms of j squared because we know that j squared is minus 1. So this is going to be j squared to the exponent of what? Which gives us the same 100. So we divide 100 divided by 2, which is a 50. 50 times 2 gives us 100. So meaning to say in place of j squared, we are going to substitute with minus 1 because we know that j squared is minus 1. So this is minus 1, but being raised to the exponent of 50. So this one is going to give us a positive one, minus one to the exponent of 50. That's a, that's a positive one. So like I said, this part, uh, you can even simplify on your calculator. Once you are done at, the, at this stage, your calculator can even assist you like this part. Uh, just put negative one in a bracket like this to the exponent of a 50 like this. So this is going to be a positive one. Even the last term that we had, negative one to the exponent of five, like this, you just use your calculator, it gives you a negative one. So these stages at the end, you can even use your calculator if you don't understand uh, the last part, all right? But this is how you simplify the, 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 the J part, all right? So like I said, it can be uh, 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 even terms or even exponents. We can also have odd terms like J to the exponent of five, J to the exponent of 29. So how do we simplify? such terms all right so let us see this part here all right let me just simplify here all right in case of uh, odd terms you are going to see that you are not going to express everything that you are having in terms of j uh everything like uh, what i'm trying to say this is five so if you try to divide because remember what i was saying you are supposed to rev it in terms of j squared so if you try to divide i want you to see 5 divided by 2, 5 divided by 2, like this, it's, it's 2,5. This is not a real term. So we can't use this as 2,5 as to the exponent of 2, we are not supposed to use uh, fractional exponents or decimal exponents. It must, it must be a whole number to a whole number. So meaning to say we are limited when it comes to an odd number like a five like this so how do you simplify this part you take this the, just the the, the 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 least that you are going to have like you just subtract one from this part meaning to say we are taking the highest term that we can have in terms or uh, that is uh, below five the highest part that you can have the highest number which is an even number in this case so guys, I want you to, to note this part. Even numbers and odd numbers, this is it. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. If I know that three is not an, uh, is not an even number, therefore I'm, I'm expecting the, the next, the, the, I mean the term before that three, which is an even number. And I will see that, okay, the, the term before, it's an even number. Okay. Let us take an example of five. Five is not an even number. It's an odd number, this one. So if we are to take it back to say, okay, what is the smaller number before five? The smaller number before is four. And four is an odd number. So meaning to say it is an even number, so this four is an even number. So it simply means from an odd number, I simply subtract one to get an even number. So meaning to say, if my number is not exactly divisible by two, I just subtract one from this number. I just take a term before that number, which is a four. So meaning to say, I'm talking about this j to the exponent of five in terms of j to the exponent of four. But if I leave it as j to the exponent, it's not j to the exponent of five. So I'm supposed to multiply it by j so that it gives me the same j to the exponent of 5 that I had before. Take note of what is happening this time. 
So meaning to say, now I can write this j to the exponent of 4 in terms of j squared. So it is going to be j squared to the exponent of what? 4 divided by 2 because this is an even number. So 4 divided by 2, that's an exact term, which is 2. So meaning to say, here I have expressed j to the exponent of 4, not j to the exponent of 5. This is j to the exponent of 4. But I need j to the exponent of 5. So I'm going to take the last j that is here so that this will give me j to the exponent of 5. Remember, I said j to the exponent of 4 times j. This is same as 1. 4 plus 1, you're multiplying the bases, which are the same. You add the exponents of so 4 plus 1. That's a 5. So meaning to say, this is j to the exponent of 5. So meaning to say, here we have written j to the exponent of 5 in a simplified manner where we can simplify because this part we know that j squared is minus 1. So you're going to have minus 1 squared times a j. And minus 1 squared, you can simplify this from your calculator. This is 1 times a j. So meaning to say, 1 times a j is going to give us a j. So if you check... Always, if you are dealing with uh, all the terms, your final answer is going to contain a j. Maybe it's a minus j, whether it's a plus j, but there's going to be a j at the end. Why least if you are dealing with uh, an even number, an even exponent, your answers always, they're going to be real terms. You're going to have your answers as real terms. Here, you're going to have your answers as imaginary terms. Okay, let us have this one, j to the exponent of, uh, let us just say, uh, 1 over, let us do this one, or, or before, let us just say j to the exponent of 29. This is just when the same thing. What you do, you'll be asked to evaluate. That is the question, evaluate. So what you're going to do is to, uh, you're asking yourself, the smaller number that I'm having just before 29 is what? Is 28. Meaning to say, I'm going to write this as j to the exponent of 28 times a j like this, so that I obtain j to the exponent of uh 29 so here is going to be j so that this is 1 28 plus 1 that's 29 so meaning to say i'm going to write now the j to the exponent of 29 as this part here meaning to say i'm going to have uh i'm going to have uh, my j squared my j to the exponent of 28 first which is the same as j to the exponent of 2 to the exponent of what now so that we obtain the same 28 so 28 divided by 2 gives us a 14 so that if you multiply 14 times 2 you get 28 but you are at j to the exponent of 28 now not to the exponent of 29 as we need to the exponent of 29 so we are going to add this one also but that is we are going to multiply it also to get j to the exponent of 29 so this is going to be j squared that is a negative one to the exponent of 14 times a j. So here we are going to have negative 1 to the exponent of 14. That is a positive, remember, uh, from your calculator. So that's positive 1 times j. So 1 times j is going to give us a j. So this is how you simplify these terms and so on and so on. All right. So uh, let us just have this last part so that we can check the other concept of our complex uh, numbers. Another one is to simplify maybe a fraction. Uh, a fraction. They might give you a fraction 1 over j to the exponent of 7 like this, all right? So when you are given a fraction this time, what we are actually supposed to do is uh, to first simplify uh, this. When you are given a j like, uh, when it is a j, like we are given 1 over j like this, you can multiply like uh, by j over j like this to remove this j in the denominator. So that will be 1 times j, which is j over j times j is j squared, which is minus 1, which is going to give us minus j. So meaning to say, if I can have in terms of a j or in terms of a whole term or a real term, I can be able to simplify this further. So this is what we, we, we want to seek from the j to the exponent of uh, 7, this one. We want to have this part. So from the j to the exponent of 7, we are going to have this as uh, let us simplify this first. This is what I'm trying to say. So we are going to have this as j to the exponent of 7, which is equal to, remember, this is an odd term. So this is going to give us j to the exponent of 2. The smaller number that we have just, uh, just before 7 is 6. So we are focusing with 6. So j to the exponent of 6 times j gives us j to the exponent of 7. But j to the exponent of 6, 
from 2, we are going to divide 6, divide by 2, which is a 3. So 3 times 2 or 3 times 2 here, that's a 6 times a j so that we obtain the j to the exponent of 7. 2 times 3, that's 6 plus 1 here, that's a, a 7. So meaning to say we are going to have j squared, which is minus 1 to the exponent of 3 times a j like this. Minus 1 to the exponent of 3, take note, minus 1 to the exponent is negative 1 times a j, which is going to give us minus j. So it means where I am seeing j to the exponent of 7, in the simplest form, I am seeing a minus j. So it means we can rewrite this whole part that we see here. We can rewrite this as 1 over. So this is going to be taken as 1 over like this. We are going to have this as 1 over j to the exponent of 7. This whole part, j to the exponent of 7, gave us minus j. This is what we got. So meaning to say, we can simplify this further. Remember I said, once you've got a j in the denominator like this as a single term, you can remove the j in the denominator by multiplying by j, which is, I'm going to talk about this uh, in, 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 in this same video, I'm going to talk about this as a separate uh, heading so that you understand me later on, but this is what you're going to do at the end. So you can multiply here, that's one times j, which is going to give us a j over negative one, negative j times a j we are going to obtain negative uh, j squared remember this is j times j which is negative uh, j squared so we are going to obtain j over negative remember j squared is negative one so we are obtaining j over negative negative one so negative times negative that is a positive so we are going to remain with a positive j so it means this whole part that we had before of one over j to the exponent of 7 is going to give us a positive j at the end. All right. So like I said, we are going to talk about this uh, later on where we talk about the complex conjugate of uh, a complex number. Uh, we shall talk about that one later on. So if you check, this is the j operation. How you simplify the j operation. Uh, how you solve equations. We talked about solving equations. Uh, the simplification of the j uh, part. Then we are going to talk about uh, the addition and subtraction. So still on our J operation, which is the rectangular form. So we are going to have what we refer to as the addition. So we have got the addition and subtraction. So that is the addition and uh, subtraction in a rectangular form. So we are going to be having this in a rectangular form. Remember our rectangular form can be written or can be expressed as the Cartesian form. This is same as the Cartesian form. And I said a complex number written in rectangular form is the form of A is equal to A plus or minus JB like this, or A Z is equal to X plus or minus JY, which is one and the same thing. So whenever you are adding or subtracting in rectangular form, you add the real terms. Remember we said this represent the real terms, this represent the imaginary term. So you add the real terms together. You are going to add or subtract. You are going to add or subtract uh, real terms together. So that's real terms uh, together in this case. Uh, the same thing, you add or subtract. You add or subtract uh, the imaginary terms together. That is the imaginary terms uh, together. All right. So this is the approach that you're going to have whenever you're simplifying addition and subtraction in rectangular form. So meaning to say, if I am given two complex numbers in rectangular form given uh, in this form Z1, which is equivalent to 1 minus J3, and Z2, which is equivalent to negative 2 plus j5 in this case these are in rectangular form and we are asked to determine or to find all right so the first equation here is to find uh, z1 plus z2 so this is an addition that is addition but what are we adding we are adding these terms in rectangular form so you'll be given a condition to find this in rectangular form or in cartesian form that is where now you are to focus on the format that you're given.
okay these numbers or these terms that we have they are already in rectangular form so what you are simply going to do is to add remember what i said whenever you're adding or subtracting in a rectangular form you add the real terms together the imaginary terms together that is uh, the concept the real terms they are all added together the real the imaginary on on the separate part so meaning to say here we are going to have z1 which is 1 minus j3 like this all right plus z2 which is equivalent to negative 2 plus j5 like this so wow that is what you're going to have so the brackets for addition they are not that important the brackets are important if we are dealing with uh, subtraction for subtraction make sure that you indicate the bracket especially on this part that you are subtracting uh so for addition this one does not affect i want you to see because here we are expanding by one so it's one times one which is one one times minus j3 which is minus j3 as you can see this is no effect the same here this is a plus one so it's plus one times minus two which is minus two plus one times j5 which is a plus j5 we've expanded the brackets so what you're going to do is to collect the terms which are the real terms so the real terms we talk about the part without a j that is the one and the minus two this part without a j so this is going to be one minus two then the imaginary terms are the one that where we have got a j in this case so the first term is a negative j3 and this is a plus j5 in this case all right so meaning to say we can combine our terms together 1 minus 2 that's negative 1 so we are subtracting 1 minus 2 which is negative 1 minus j3 plus j5 so here we are simply adding the j and the j remains as they are it's like a minus 3x plus 5x the same way you add minus 3 and 5 which gives you 2 then x remains as it is so it is the same thing with the j part this one the j part okay uh the j part here we are the j part so meaning to say we are focusing on negative 3 and positive 5. These are the terms that we are focusing with in this case, all right? So negative 3 plus 5 gave us a 2. So meaning to say this is going to be a plus J2 or plus 2J, uh, no matter the way that you're going to have it written. This is uh, how you simplify your complex numbers. As long as they are in rectangular form, you work with the uh, real terms together then the imaginary terms separately all right so that is how you simplify so i'm gonna have another question again on this simplification uh again in the same rectangular form this time we want to have uh z2 minus z1 the complex number z2 minus the complex number z1 all right so this is what you're going to have in this case so our z2 is negative 2 so that's negative 2 uh plus j5 in this case like this minus z1 as it is our z1 is a uh, one minus j3 like this all right so what you're going to do is uh, to subtract so take note uh like i said when there is a negative always take a negative with a pinch of salt uh that is um, always when there's a negative okay the first part we are just multiplying by one one times negative two that's negative two one times j5 that will be a j5 in this case negative one negative times one so this is a negative one here there's a negative one so it's negative one times one which gives us negative one negative one times negative so it's negative negative which is a positive j3 all right once you're at this stage guys collect the terms which are of the real terms together uh negative two and negative one gives us negative three uh the imaginary terms together this is uh plus five plus three so it's five plus three which is eight so this is going to be plus j eight in this case all right so this is what you're going to obtain from z2 minus z1 so as you can see the simplification that we have uh for addition as long as dealing with uh, addition in this case and subtraction all you need is to work with your real terms work with your imaginary terms together all right uh so we are still under the rectangular form under simplification we also have the multiplication uh and the division so we also have what we refer to as the multiplication and the division so we are going to start with the multiplication so we've got the multiplication uh multiplication that is in we are still 
in rectangular form so in a rectangular form or cartesian form that is uh, in a rectangular form do not confuse guys we shall have another multiplication in a polar form here we are still in rectangular form so remember our rectangular form a plus or minus jb so if we are to multiply two complex numbers what we need to keep in mind is that j squared is equivalent to minus one remember we talked about this that j squared is equal to minus one why am i emphasizing on you remembering this because you are multiplying so there is a, a greater chance of having j being multiplied to j because there's a multiplication there and whenever you multiply j and j you've got j squared then you are going to obtain it as a negative one so you need to understand this in mind but as we know guys multiplication is multiplication just as usual you might be given to simplify uh let's say you're asked to evaluate or to simplify in a rectangular form uh and we are given in this case uh 2j into 3 plus uh 2j like this all right so this is a simplification that you might be given in uh, j operation or in our rectangular form so in this case what we ought to understand is that just like uh, our normal application wherever there are brackets we need to expand each and every term by the term outside of the bracket so that 2j is going to multiply 3 is going to also multiply 2j in this case all right so let us multiply and see what's going to happen so this is 2j times 3 we simply multiply real terms and real terms so 2 times 3 that is going to give us 6 but there is a j okay we multiply this is plus this is plus we're going to multiply two times two numbers to numbers so that is going to be a four then j and j so we are multiplying j times a j which is going to give us a j squared so but we say that wherever there is a j squared it's a negative one so meaning to say in place of the j squared that i'm seeing here in place of this j squared i'm going to represent this with a negative one so at the end we are going to have this as a 6j plus 4 times negative one take note the first part there i do not have a j i do not have a j squared so the j is going to remain as it is but where there's a j squared now that is where we have the problem we have to simplify that uh in simplest form so this is going to give us 6j uh, plus four times negative one which is going to give us a negative four so this is what you're going to have at the end so it depends with the brackets how are you given the brackets so this is the first part that you're given to evaluate all right so this is our first equation uh let us check another part under multiplication so still under multiplication we might be given to evaluate or to expand the brackets in this case uh let us say we are given uh, z1 is equal to 1 plus uh, j2 like this and uh, z2 is equivalent to 4 minus j3 okay so this is what you are given then the question is to find or to evaluate uh, z1 z2 like this so this is a multiplication z1 times z2 all right so like i said from our multiplication what we need is to properly expand brackets with depending with how you are given the brackets all right so the first part we are given uh so that's z1 by z2 is equal to our z1 is 1 plus j2 you substitute in place of z1 times z2 which is our z2 it's 4 minus j3 like this all right so what you're going to do is to expand the brackets this time we've got two brackets so one multiplies the first term which is uh, 1 times 4, that is going to be 4. Then 1 is going to multiply J3, negative J, J3 here. So that will be negative uh, J3. Okay, we are done with 1. We move on to J2, positive J2. So it's positive J2 times a 4. So this is going to be a positive, positive, positive. So we're going to obtain J2 times 4, which is 8. All right, we move on to another part. Again, J2 is multiplying negative J3. So take note on the signs there. It's a plus and a minus, which is going to give us a minus J times J, which is uh, J squared. Then two times three, which is going to give us a six. So take note, we have got a J squared there. So this is what you're going to have at the end. Uh, so you can simplify. 
uh, that is going to be four. Uh, here we can collect like terms. Uh, yeah, we do not have any 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 worries there. This this is J. This is J. So you can collect your like terms. Negative three plus eight. So negative three plus eight. That is a plus five. So it's going to be plus J five like this. But my worry is on this last verse or the last part that we are given there, where we are saying the J squared represents negative one. So it means I'm going to have negative one in place of J squared. So there's a negative here. So it's negative times negative one, which is now a positive. So we are now having a positive six. The J squared is no longer there. This J squared is the one that gave us negative one. We no longer have this J squared. It is the one that gave us a negative one. But now we are combining this negative which was already there with the negative that we got from J squared, it gives us a positive. From there, we can collect our terms together. That is uh, the real terms now, four and six, these are real terms. We do not have a J on these numbers, so we can add them together. So this will be 10 plus J five. Remember our, our simplification, A plus or minus JB, real term, followed by the marginal term. So we can have it this way, meaning to say here we could have also written here as a negative four plus six J or J six on this one. All right. So this is one and the same simplification, like what I'm trying to say. All right. So this is how we apply our multiplication. As long we are dealing with our multiplication, what is important, what is important is the J squared part. Are you, are you noticing the J squared part on your calculations? If you can't notice that, then you are bound to leave your answer at this stage because of the J squared. So you must understand that the J squared has to be simplified from the understanding that we have. All right. So this is uh, uh, how we have this part. Okay, guys, we are going to see this part later on in another simplification. So I want to have it this way. Uh, let's say again we are given to simplify Z1 in this case, which is equivalent to 4 plus J2. So we are given uh, this one, Z1 is 4 plus J2 and uh, Z2. Uh, okay, let us have our Z2 here and our Z2, which is 4 minus J3. If you take note, there is something that is just happening between this one. Oh, everything is fine. Only that here is a plus, here is a minus. So we shall talk about this. What exactly is it that is happening? But I want you to see what happens when you multiply such terms, which are the same, but only that there's a difference that this is a plus, this is a minus. Okay. I want you to see, I want you to see what is going to happen here. So the question will be uh, to evaluate uh, Z1 by Z2. So we want to simplify Z1 by Z2 in this case. All right. So Z1, Z2 is going to give us the product. So we're going to take our Z1 as before. That's 4 plus J3 uh, being multiplied to our Z2, which is uh, 4 minus J3 in this case. All right. So you're going to multiply 4 times 4, which is going to be 16. 4 times negative J3, that is going to be negative J4 times 3, which is uh, 12 in this case. All right. We are done with four. We move on to J3. That's J3 and four here, which is going to be a positive J12. So we are going to have positive J12 in this case, J3 and negative J3. That's positive negative, which is a negative uh, J squared three times three, which is going to give us a nine. All right. Still on this part, I want you to see at this stage here, if you had to simplify further, like I said, these terms are the same. Do not worry about this. Simplify them. So it's minus 12 plus 12, which gives us a zero there. So meaning to say we're going to be left with 16 here. That's a zero. There's nothing that's going to, that's we are going to have at the end. So we are going to be left with uh, minus J squared nine. This one gave us a zero. There's nothing there. All right. But J squared is equivalent to negative one. We understand that J squared is negative one. So meaning to say here, there is going to be a negative one, negative one on J squared. So that is, we are now having uh, 16 minus minus nine. This is what we are now having, which is 16 plus nine, which is going to give us a positive 25, which is a real term, a real term. We are obtaining a real number there. Not there is no J, there is no J at all. But what type of numbers are these? Which, when you multiply a complex number to another complex number, you obtain a real term. What type of what type of a condition is this? All right, 
this term that we see here or this other part where we are having a j is simply the conjugate of the complex number so the com the conjugate okay let me have it this this way the conjugate of a complex number the conjugate of a complex number so we have got uh, the conjugate in this case uh the conjugate of a complex number all right whenever you are given the co conjugate of a complex number we are saying if z is representing a complex number a which is a, 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 a the one that we are having in a, a cartesian form or in rectangular form so if z is a complex number of a plus jb like this Therefore, its complex conjugate, which is written as Z bar, or it can be a Z star like this, the conjugate of a complex number is simply the introduction of a negative on the imaginary part. You introduce a negative. So on this part, where there's a positive here, I'm going to introduce a negative. So it is going to be A minus JB like this, which is uh, now A complex uh, conjugate like this so it can be given this way or you can write it this way is the the complex conjugate so it's the introduction of a negative on the imaginary term on the imaginary term so meaning to say if i am given four plus j3 like this four plus j3 the complex conjugate of this is going to be uh the complex conjugate is going to be four minus because there's a plus minus j3 like this what is important is the imaginary part so they can even confuse you like to 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 say what is the complex conjugate of j2 you ask a, a simple question like that to say what is the complex conjugate of j2 this one this is our this is the imaginary part exactly that we say it must have a negative for it to be uh, uh, the complex conjugate so meaning to say the complex conjugate of this is going to be minus j2 because we are saying this is same as zero plus j2 so we introduce a negative on the imaginary so it is going to be minus j2 like this all right so now what i'm saying is that the multiplication like we saw here let us conclude what is happening between the complex number and its conjugate we saw that when you multiply a complex number, because this is our z here, this is our, our complex number z here. If we check here, this was the complex number. 4 minus j is now the conjugate. We multiplied a complex number to its conjugate. We obtained a real term, which is a real number. This is what we are going to have in conclusion to say it therefore follows that the product of a complex number, so therefore not that, the product, therefore, not that the product of a complex number to its complex conjugate gives us a real term. So we are going to have a real term or a real number. In actual sense, what it simply means, if let, let's guys, if you understand this, if z is equal to a plus j b like this, and its complex conjugate is equivalent to a minus jb like this it follows that the product of z by its conjugate is equivalent to a squared plus b squared i hope i make sense here all right let 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 me let me explain you understand me better instead of you expanding brackets i want you to understand this part instead of you expanding brackets it follows that a squared plus b squared is the product of its of the complex number and its complex conjugate all right guys you understand let me take you back here this is what we had before as i was saying this is what we had before this is our z and z1 here this is what we had before we said we well, want to use this example so that you understand from this example here we used our z1 which is 4 plus j3 z which is another part which is we say it, it's it's having a negative so it means it's a complex conjugate meaning to say this is our a this is our b this is our a this is our b the only part that you are having this is positive this is negative to make it a complex conjugate and we are saying the product of a complex number to its conjugate simply means we are going to square a and b so here we are supposed to just square a squared plus b squared i want you to see what was going to happen a squared, which is A, it's 4. 
So this is going to give us 4 squared plus B squared. Our B here is 3, so it's 3 squared. 4 squared, which is 16, plus 3 squared, which is 9. 16 plus 9, which is 25, which is the same answer that we see here. So instead of us expanding brackets like what we are doing here, this is unnecessary. We are simply supposed to use A squared plus B squared whenever there's a product of a complex number to its complex conjugate. So meaning to say with this law or with this concept that I mentioned here, we can use it to answer a lot of questions, especially on the division part, because division is the one that works with the complex number and its conjugate. That's why I'm giving much emphasis on this part so that you understand this. So meaning to say, guys, if you were given to simplify, let us, let us just take an example. We are given to simplify. We are given that Z1 uh, is equivalent to 1 minus J2 like this. Z2 is equivalent to 1 plus J2. You are not told that this is the complex conjugate. Or you, 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 the question never, never told you that this is the complex conjugate of this number. No, the question is evaluate. You are asked to evaluate Z1 by Z2. In your own understanding, you are supposed to see the difference that is happening here. That I am having the one that is the same as here. I'm having the two the same as here. The only thing that is affecting is that here I'm having a negative, here I'm having a positive. So what does this part tells us? What does it, it tells us that this one is the conjugate of this, or this term is the conjugate of this term? Because the conjugate of a complex number is simply the introduction of a negative. If you introduce a negative here, you get a positive. So we can say this Z2 is the complex conjugate of Z1. Or we can say Z1 is the complex conjugate of Z2, no matter the way that you want to, 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 to express it, it's still one and the same thing. So if we can see that this is the conjugate of Z1, Z2, so simply we are going to square because it's a product of a complex number to its conjugate. I'm simply going to square A and it only happens only, only, only when you are dealing with a complex number and its conjugate only there that's where you use a squared plus b squared once this is uh, z1 which is 1 plus j3 this part no longer exists you use the origin the, the normal way of expanding brackets so do not confuse this part guys it only works when you are working with a complex number to its conjugate that is a uh, way you use this part of squaring a and b only complex number and its conjugate so meaning to say here we are going to square our a which is one so this is going to be one squared our b which is two so this is going to be a two here so this will be two squared so one squared is one plus two squared which is four one plus four which is five so i want you to simplify all right. In, in fact, let us simplify together instead of uh, to, to, to say I simplified and I got a, a wrong answer. Let us simplify and see what was going to happen. This is what was going to happen. We are, we are supposed to simplify 1 minus J2 into 1 plus J2. This is what we are supposed to do. 1 times 1, which is 1. 1 times J2, which is plus J2. Minus J2 times 1, that's minus J2. Minus J2 and plus J2 is going to be minus J times J which is j squared 4. And uh, we simplify this part, collect like terms, j2 minus j2, that's a 0 here. So we are going to obtain 1 minus j squared 4. So we are going to remain with uh, 1 minus j squared 4. But we said j squared gives us negative 1. So meaning to say there's a negative 1. So meaning we are going to have 1, 1 minus minus 4, because this whole part here, gave us a negative. So 1 minus minus 4 is a positive 5. So it's up to you whether you want to expand the normal way that you are used to, or you take advantage of knowing that the complex and its conjugate, I can simply square A and B together combined. So it's up to you now to choose which one is going to be the best way uh, in your simplification. But that's how you work with uh, the J operation of uh, a complex number to its complex uh, conjugate. So this is going to help us in the division of complex numbers now. So we are going to have division. Again, this division is uh, in uh, 
Cartesian form. So we are still in rectangular or Cartesian form division in uh, rectangular form. So we are still working in our rectangular or in our Cartesian form for a division. So if you are dividing complex numbers, let us take uh, uh, an example that we have got uh, Z1 and uh, Z2, which are dividing. I'm going to explain uh, with a question. This one I'm going to explain with a question. So let's say we are being asked to simplify. Uh, simplify. That's 1 minus J3 like this. Everything over minus 3 minus J4 like this. All right. This is what is going to happen, guys. You are on the division part. You are dividing complex numbers. What happens is that a complex number... Uh, it's, it's just like, uh, let, let, let me explain this in terms of normal numbers. Remember, when you are dealing with uh, numbers, it's, it's, it's not necessary for us to write, to write like 1 over negative 3. We take the negative on top so that this will be negative 1 over 3. So we, with the same approach of uh, our complex numbers, when we are talking about division, it's only to say that our complex number is not supposed, a fraction is not supposed to carry a J in the denominator. So what we want is to force it to have a J on top, just like what we had to take this negative on top. So that is where we are just, that is the only process that we are simply making here. We want to make this term a real term we want it to be a real term the denominator must be a real term this is what we want so how can we make a denominator to be a real term okay this is where it comes now we say the denominator is supposed to be a real term and there is only part, one part that gives us a real term which part is that one when a complex number is multiplied to its complex conjugate i said it gives us a real term so with this understanding alone with this understanding alone since you want to make the denominator a real term so this is what we want to do make uh the denominator uh the denominator a real term this is what i'm saying so we want to make this denominator to be a real 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 term, a real number like five like seven like eight and it's only from this part that we said a complex number multiplied to its co conjugate gives us a real term. And the conjugate of a complex number is the introduction of a negative on the J part. Meaning to say I was supposed to have this fraction as uh, 1 minus J3. We are not worried about the denominator, guys. Our denominator does not even affect us. It can carry a J like this, 1 over J3 over 7 but not 7 over 1 plus j3. Once the denominator carries a j, rationalize that one. It must be a real, real, real denominator. That is what we are seeking for. All right. So with this application, we were supposed to have this as minus 3 minus j4 like this. All right. So we said this is our denominator here, which is a, a, a complex number. What is its complex conjugate? We introduce a negative. We already there's a negative there. So if you introduce a negative, it is going to be a positive. So meaning to say, we're supposed to multiply by minus three plus J4 like this. If you multiply these like this part here, it's a complex number. Its conjugate, it gives us a real term. But since we have multiplied, since we have chosen to multiply this, whatever that you do must also affect the numerator so that it's not an effect because this is same as you are multiplying by one. Multiplying by one does not affect anything. So whatever that you do to make this a real term, to make the denominator, I mean a real term, to make the denominator a real term, whatever effect that you are going to do in the denominator must also be done in the numerator. So this is what you're going to have. So as you can see from this part, after introducing the complex conjugate, we can see that uh, what needs to, to be simplified now is to multiply. Do not cancel anything at this stage because if you cancel this part and this part, you are back to this question again. So do not cancel, all right? Do not cancel anything, but combine your numerators together. So this is going to be one minus J3 being multiplied to 
minus 3 plus j4 like this. In the denominator, we are going to have the same thing again. Uh, that is uh, a negative j3. So this is going to be negative 3, negative j4 being multiplied to negative 3 plus j4 like this. All right. Now let us consider our application that we had before. Let me reduce this so that we can see everything on this part. I want to use this properly. All right. So if we consider now, we can see that in the numerator, this is something else. This conjugate, this part that we see here, this bracket here, it's a conjugate, yes, but it's not the conjugate of this bracket. So meaning to say this one does not work to say a, a complex number when multiplied to a conjugate gives us a real term. It's, it must be from its complex number to its complex conjugate. This is where we are supposed to obtain a real term, not from the numerator. From the, from the numerator, we are going to simplify direct the way that we are used, meaning to say we are going to expand our brackets the way that we are used. We are going to expand this one, 1 times negative 3, which is going to give us negative 3. We expand 1 and uh, J4. So this is going to be a plus J4. Uh, we are done with 1. We move on to J3. Uh, and a positive and a negative j3 so this is going to be a positive j9 so we have got positive j9 there then a uh, negative j3 and a uh, positive j4 so that's a negative j times j which is going to be j squared uh, 3 times 4 that's a 12 all right over in the denominator like i said you can expand your brackets but you can use that concept that i said a complex number to its complex conjugate gives us a real term, which is simply taken from a squared plus b squared. So meaning to say here, we can simply take our a, this is our a, this is our b, this is our a, this is our b. So it's one and the same thing. So you can take minus three squared plus b squared, which is a four squared in this case. All right, so the part that is got our b, is the four not that don't for, for don't for, don't worry about the, this part with the minus take the, the term the plus or minus is already considered there so we take it as a, a four squared like this so this is how we can simplify it guys or you can expand your brackets minus three versus minus so that will be a positive nine here then we've got uh negative three versus uh negative uh that will be a positive here J, which is a uh, negative J12. So it's going to be negative J12 here. Then we've got uh, negative J3, uh, J4 here, which is being affected to J3 on this part. So it's negative versus negative, which is a positive. That's J12 in this case. All right. Then we've got uh, negative J4 and positive J4, which is going to be a negative uh, J squared 4 times 4 which is a uh, 16. So that's another way that you could have done this way. Uh, then you can simplify, as you can see, this part will cancel out uh, minus 12 plus 12, that's a zero there. You're going to remain with uh, nine. Then uh, we know that J squared here, it's a negative one. So it's nine minus minus 16, which is a plus 16, which is going to give us 25. So it is the same application, guys, same approach, same way as uh, this part that we see here so we are going to have the same thing all right so here we are going to end up with uh let us simplify the top part we are going to have uh negative j squared here on this j squared which is going to be uh j squared is a negative one the whole of this j squared here it's a, a negative so negative negative that's a positive at the end so we are going to have minus three plus 12 ne remember negative negative which means we have got a plus. So meaning to say we're going to have negative 3 plus 12. All right, this is plus J4 and J9. So you can even add these terms 4 and 9 together, which is going to give us, uh, that's a 13. So we are going to have uh, J13 uh, in this case at the end. So we are going to add and obtain uh, J13. All right, this part in the uh, we simplified, we go 25, or you can simplify minus 3 squared, which is 9 plus 4 squared, which is 16. So as you can see, it is the same approach that we had here, 9 squared, which is from this part, we obtained the same thing. So this is going to give us the same answer. So that is a negative 3 plus 12, which is going to give us a 9. That's 9 uh, from 12 minus 3, which is 9 plus uh, J13 over 25. So like I said, this we are in a rectangular form where we can write our complex number Z as A, 
plus or minus JB. So meaning to say we can separate this from the plus or from the plus that we have. So it is going to be 9 over 25. So you're going to separate 9 over 25 plus J13 over 25. So that we see the A separately, the JB separately. So this is what we see, the real term separate, uh, the imaginary term separate. So you simply divide each term uh, by 25, which you can also write as a decimal. That's if you want, you can also write it this as a decimal. So this is what you're going to have on your division as long as you are dealing with the division this is uh, what you need is to, what you need is to make sure that you find the complex conjugate multiply by it to the numerator and to the denominator also all right so there are so many ways guys so many things that we need uh, to know on these complex numbers also we had uh, we also have this simplification where we need to represent our complex numbers on the argand diagram so we've got uh, the argand uh diagram in this case all right so we have got uh, the argand diagram uh so this is uh, a presentation that we're going to have but remember we are still in rectangular form we are still working from the rectangular form because we shall present again in polar form on the argand diagram so uh we are going to talk about that one later on so on the argand diagram is just like a, a cartesian plane remember from your uh from your algebra there we have got uh, the cartesian plane which talks about the x-axis and the y-axis but this time we are referring to the real axis so this is our real axis in this case we are saying real axis and we have got the imaginary axis so this is our imaginary axis this one represents uh the imaginary axis which is the remember in rectangular form z is equal to a plus or minus jb so we are going to be representing the real and the imaginary so we are going to have the imaginary from the jb part the real from the a so this is uh how you can present your complex uh, number so let's say we have got uh uh, 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 let's say we've got uh, a complex number which is represented as a plus jb we are going to say this is our real axis this is our imaginary axis with a j in this case so if let's say our real term is at a positive is in the positive our imaginary is also on the positive what you're going to do is to join the points where A and B meet, A and B, they meet at a certain point. Let's say they meet at this point. So you join from the origin, that is from the center, to where A and B meet like this. So this is our presentation that we are having, where we are saying from this point to this point, it's A. So we are saying the distance from this point to this point is represented by A. From this point here to this point, that is our B. And... Uh, this we are going to talk about it later on which is our resultant and the angle this one we are, to, we are going to talk about them later on in the polar form but for now this is what we just have we need to know where the real part is and where the imaginary part is located only that that is how you present your argand diagram uh, your argand diagram in this case okay what am i trying to say let's say we are given a complex number we want to present on the argand diagram in this case and we are given a complex number z which is given as a minus one plus j5 like this which is in a rectangular form so for you to present this on the argand diagram you're going to need your real axis and your imaginary axis so like i said this is our real axis and this is our imaginary axis in this case all right so uh take note of your axis each axis must be presented properly each axis must be presented properly all right so this is what you are going to have uh like i said okay let me put this way this is our imaginary like this all right so asking ourselves here we are going to ask us to say where do we have our real being a negative because our real it's a negative term where are we going to have our imaginary term being a positive is it on top or is it below so from our argand diagram uh this is where we have got positive values in the imaginary negative values in the imaginary positive values for the real axis negative values for the real axis so we are saying when uh our pos when i talk about the positive is this way for the real negative the other side so meaning to say 
minus one, we approximate, this is uh, let's say negative one, negative two, then J5, we can say this is one, two, three, uh, four, five. So the imaginary is the one that carries J. So we are going to indicate this one with a J. Let us just put a J here. So we are going to say, where do these points meet? Negative one on the real part and the five on the imaginary part. So this is negative one up to a positive five. So these points, they meet at this point here. So you indicate from the origin to that point with an arrow like this. So this is a uh, indicate on the Agandhi diagram that is uh, a complex number that is uh, in a rectangular form or in the Cartesian form. This is uh, what we need uh, to have or to present. So it depends with where are you having your complex number? Where is it presented? Like for an example, let us say we are given the complex number Z being a uh, negative three, negative J four like this. So we are see, as you can see here, our real part is negative. Our imaginary is negative. So we are going to have it this way. Uh, remember, it's just an other diagram. We've got our real axis our imaginary axis, which it carries a J in this case. So we need the, the real being negative three. So we've got negative one, negative two, negative three, somewhere there. This is one, two, we do not need this side. Then the imaginary part, it's a negative, which means I talk about below the X axis. That's where our imaginary is negative. So that's maybe negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, like this. So you're going to join where these two points meet, negative three from the real, where is it going to meet with the negative four from the imaginary? They meet at this point. Where they meet, you join from the origin to that point. So this is the indication that you're going to have. So no matter what you have, whether it's a positive versus negative, what you need is to locate the quadrant where you are going to have uh, that indication of a of a complex number. So this is the indication of an Agan diagram. We shall uh, talk about this uh, more and more from our question papers. As we shall be revising question papers, but all you need is to understand this basic approach. All right. Also in a rectangular form, we have got what we call the complex equations in our syllabus. We are going to be working with uh, complex uh, equations. All right, that's complex uh, equations. What are complex equations? Just like a normal equation that we have in algebra, in a complex manner, we are saying, if we are given a condition, there is a condition that will be given. Uh, so let us say we are given, in this case, uh, a complex number. All right, let us just say we are given that a complex number in a rectangular form. So remember, we are still in rectangular rectangular form or the Cartesian form. So if we are given a complex number in a rectangular form as A plus JB being equal to a complex number again in rectangular form being X plus JY like this. All right. It simply means that there, there is no way, guys. It's, it's like we are saying 2 plus J3 like this. There is no way we are going to have this as a 4 plus J5 and you say these two are equal. There is no way like that. If we say 2 here, yeah, this must also be a 2. If we say J3, this must also be J3. They, these two, must, they, they, if we say they are equal, this term and this term must be equal. This term and this term must be equal. So meaning to say with this consideration, we can use it now to apply to this complex to say, if we are given a complex number in this format, it therefore follows that A, the real term is equal to X, which is our real term. So A will be equal to X. The imaginary part is going to be equated together, meaning to say we are going to have the JB being equated to the JY like this. But as we can see that the J and the J are the same. So meaning to say B is equal to Y. So we're also saying B is equivalent to Y in this case. So this is what we are going to have from our complex equations. If two complex uh, terms are equal, if two complex numbers are equal, one from the left, another one from the right, you equate the real terms together, you equate the imaginary terms together, that is to find the value of the unknown that you'll be given depending with the type of equation 
that you be given for that particular question. All right, so let me express this in a simpler manner so that we can understand each other. Uh, let me express this with a simpler question. Uh, let me just introduce this one with a simpler question. Uh, okay, let me just use this one aside here. All right. Let us say we are given, because we are saying two complex numbers for them to be equal. We must have one on the left and the other one on the right hand side. So questions will be to solve for X or to solve for whatever letter that you be given. Like for an example, solve uh, for X. So this one, we are uh, supposed to solve for A and B. Solve for A and B or find the values of A and B. We are given in this case that 2 plus J, given that 2 plus J uh, into bracket uh, 3 minus J2 like this is equal to A plus JB. So this is equal to A plus JB. So all this part is equal to A plus JB like this. All right. So guys, they know that if they give you a simple question like this, 3 plus J4 is equal to A plus JB, then you'll be asked, what is the value of A? You simply take A is equal to 3, B is equal to 4. This is something that you can clearly see. So they are not going to give you such type of questions. You are going to use that approach on any particular question that you're given, like for an example, this one that you are given here. So what you need to ask yourself is, how can I have this whole question? All right, all right, all right, sorry for this. How can I have this whole question that we are seeing, this whole part on the left-hand side in the form of A plus G JB? Meaning to say, I have to expand the brackets. We are back to our multiplication. That's why we talked about the multiplication before. So meaning to say we are going to expand by multiplication 2 and uh, 3 in this case, which is going to give us uh, 6. Then we have got uh, 2 uh, versus J2, which is going to be J4. That will be a negative, negative J4. We are multiplying 2 and 2. So we are done with the 2 in this case. We move on to J in this case. So it's J times 3, which is going to be a positive J. So it's positive uh, J3. All right. We are done with uh, this part. We move on to J and negative J2. So that's a positive and negative. So this is going to give us negative uh, J times J, which is J squared 2. That's 1 here times 2, which is equal to A plus JB. So you're equating to the right hand side. You simplify the left hand side as usual. So this is going to give us 6. Uh, we can collect our like terms, negative J4 and positive J three meaning to say we are going to carry negative four plus three so negative four plus three that will be a negative one so we're going to have this as negative j that's negative one j which is a negative j then we move on here there is a j squared so j squared is negative one so that's negative negative two which is going to be a positive two in this case this is equal to a plus jb all right just equating our right hand side, whatever that you are do, having on the left hand side is equal to the right hand side, both in equation. Collect our like terms, 6 versus 2, these are the real terms. So 6 plus 2, that is going to be 8, minus j is equal to a plus jb like this, which is an equation that we can take from this format. We are now left with a normal rectangular form to a normal rectangular form from this way we can equate our real terms together a t corresponding to uh a three to a in this case sorry this eight here corresponding to eight so to a so meaning to say we are going to say at the end we are going to leave this as therefore our a uh therefore here our a is going to be equal to eight all right so therefore our a is going to be equal to eight a positive one. This one is a positive eight. Then here there is a minus on the J part. Take note, there's a minus on the J part. So meaning to say, we are saying the minus of J is equal. Here there is a plus J. It's plus J B. So meaning to say to find B, we simply cancel the J and the J. We are left with negative one, which is equal to B. So that means B is equivalent to negative one. So you can conclude to say, therefore, a is equivalent to 8, and in this case, and 
In this case, our B is equivalent to negative one. If A is equivalent to eight, our B is going to be equivalent to negative one. This is how you solve a complex equation. What you need is the information about that particular uh, side that you're given, which is the one that is the you are supposed to work from. You need to simplify from one side to equate to the other side. All right. So that is how you solve these uh, typical questions. Uh, let us consider this question here. All right. So let me just increase a little bit here. I want us to consider uh, this question again on solving of uh, the complex numbers. All right. We are given again to solve. So this one is to solve for X and Y. So for x and and y, if we are given uh, x minus jy in this case like this, which is equal to j minus 4. So this is j minus 4 in bracket plus uh, 2 plus j like this, everything over uh, 2 minus j. All right. So for x and y, a normal equation again, but if we check it's no longer normal because of what we are having on the left hand on the right hand side here we've got something that is uh, too much complicated here so what we need is to work from the right hand side until we've got a simple term just like uh, a simple expression like on the left hand side so what are we going to do let us start with the fraction we've got a fraction here I said whenever there's a fraction, what you need is to rationalize so that we make the denominator a real term we want our denominator to be a real term. So you multiply by the complex conjugate of our denominator. Introduce a negative in the imaginary. So this will be 2 plus j. So you multiply by 2 plus j, both the numerator and the denominator in this case. So meaning to say here we are going to remain with uh, x. So this uh, we are going to have this as, let me just take this one. So we are going to have this as uh, x minus jy is equal to this part just leave it as, as it is uh it's j minus four it's not affecting us for the meantime plus now we can multiply so as you can see we introduce this part so it means we are multiplying this a bracket this a bracket here so two times two so we're going to multiply uh the numerator together two times two which is going to be a four then we multiply two and uh, j which is going to be J2 or 2J. So that's J2 in this case. Uh, then we've got J here and 2, which is going to be 2J again. Uh, then J plus J, that would be a J squared. So we're going to have J squared, or you can just open two brackets and expand. All right, we are back on that format that I was talking about, the 2 minus J multiply to the 2 plus J, a complex times its complex conjugate gives us or we are going to take this as a squared plus b squared. Or you can expand brackets, which is fine. So our a in this case is 2. Our b meaning to say there is a 1 in this case. So this is going to give us 2 squared plus 1 squared. So guys, if you don't understand this part, please expand the brackets as usual. Just like what we did on these two brackets. Still, we are going to obtain the same answer. What is important is, are you understanding the stages that you are taking? Uh, that is the most important part. All right. So from this part, we can simplify uh, the left-hand side just as it is. All right. That is equal to J minus 4 again. Uh, this part just leave as it is again plus we can collect our like terms on the numerator here j squared knowing that j squared is a minus one so we are going to have a uh, four plus minus one which is going to give us a three then we have got uh, j2 plus 2j that's uh, two plus two which is a four so that is going to be j4 in this case over two squared plus one squared this is two squared which is four plus one which is going to be a five so we are going to obtain a five in this case from uh, uh, this part of which you could have simplified from your brackets. You're going to obtain the same thing. So what you're going to do is to separate now. Remember what I was saying about uh, writing in a rectangular form, the format of uh, the A plus or minus JB separate. In this case, three over five, J four over five again. So we are going to separate uh, this part. So meaning to say from the left hand side, again, we still have as it is X minus j y like this which is equal to, let us expand our brackets one times j that is going to be a j one times minus four which is negative four plus so take note if the if there was a negative here you're going to open a bracket but because there's a plus it does not affect so this is going to be plus 
3 over 5. So you're going to have 3 over 5 like this. Then plus J4. So this is going to be J4 over 5. We are separating this part with the denominator, which is 5. So as you can see, we have got uh, terms which need to be combined together. We can combine our terms together. That is uh, from the right-hand side. The left-hand side, still as it is, X minus JY is equal to collect our like terms, uh, the real terms. Remember our format, the real term first. So we're going to start with the negative 4 plus 3 over 5. These are the real terms that we are having, which is going to give us something like uh, negative 17 over 5. So we're going to obtain negative 17 over 5 in this case. All right. We move on to the imaginary part, which is the J part here. So we've got J, which is 1J, and this is uh, J4 over 5. So we are adding 1 plus 4 over 5. So if we add 1 plus 4 over 5, that is going to be 9 over 5. So it's going to be plus J uh, 9 over 5 like this. All right. So this is where now we are saying we are done with, on our simplification. We are left with the normal rectangular form that we are used to. So meaning to say from this part, we can equate our terms. That's X here corresponding to the real term, which is a negative 17 over 5. So therefore, in this case, our X is going to be equivalent to negative 17 over 5, which you can write as a decimal if you want. All right, you can write this as a decimal. So our X there, uh, as I say, that's negative 17 over 5. The same thing, if we talk about the imaginary part, we've got minus J in this case, minus JY in this case, we're we referring to the minus JY and the positive J uh, 9 over 5. So you can formulate this as an equation to say, minus j y like this is equal to a plus j 9 over 5. So the j and the j part here will cancel. So that means to find y, we divide by the negative both sides. So this is going to be a negative. So meaning to say y is going to be a negative of 9 over 5. We divide by negative so that y becomes a positive. So that is what you're going to have. x is going to remain as negative 17 over 5, y is going to be negative uh, 9 over 5, which you can write again as decimals. So this is how you operate on the equations. We shall see more questions uh, as we shall be revising question papers. You shall see how to apply more questions of this typical nature of your complex uh, equations, working with uh, complex equations. All right. So I think uh, for the rectangular form, uh, guys, we are done. Uh, we are done. As long as we are talking about complex equations, we are done. Uh, I mean, the, 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 the rectangular form, uh, I think this part we are done. What we need now is to talk about the polar form, the polar, polar form. All right. So let us see. Uh, we shall we shall add we shall add as we move on we shall add a lot of things as we move on so let us see what we refer to as the polar form all right the polar form being taken uh, from the rectangular form actually we are saying this time a complex number z is now given in the form of r angle theta like this all right which is something else okay let me explain what does this part mean R angle of theta, where R is represented, this R here is representing the magnitude. So this is our magnitude, uh, which is uh, the resultant. Actually, let's just, just say the resultant. Most of us, we take as resultant from our engineering science, the resultant, resultant, this and that. So that is your magnitude there. Uh, all right, or the length that you're taking the, 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 the from the hypotenuse side. And this theta that we see here is referred to as the argument. So this is uh, the argument, which is the angle that we are taking from, uh, okay, let me indicate it this way. If you take from the Argand diagram, I want us to take from the Argand diagram that we did previously. Remember, we talked of the Argand diagram before. If we take it from that Argand diagram like this, let's say this is what we have like this in the first quadrant. Uh, okay, we've got something like this from our Argand diagram. Uh, where I was saying, this is your real axis, this is your imaginary axis. So if you cross-checked, we're saying these values, they correspond, these values, they correspond this way from the J part here, which is our B part, the real from A, which is our A. So this whole side represents A, 
this wall length represents B, which is from this point up to this point. This is our B. So if we take a consideration to say this is a right angle triangle. So our R here, which is our resultant, and our angle theta, which is taken from the real axis to the resultant between to the resultant from. Take note where the angle is taken from the real axis, which is not just from the real axis, from the positive real axis to the resultant. So that is how you take your angle theta. So this angle, this arrow here, which is our resultant, which is the modulus in this case, is simply taken from the Pythagoras theorem. As you can see, that's our hypotenuse in this case. So meaning to say R is simply equivalent to the square root of uh, A squared plus B squared, which was taken from hypotenuse squared is equal to side squared plus side squared. So if you introduce the square root both sides, R is equal to the square root of A squared plus B squared. All right. Then theta from the sides that we are given, working with these sides, not with R, it was R here, we calculated this one. You, maybe you, make, you made a mistake. So it's, it's, it's best for you to use the original values. So working with original values A and B, we are going to see according to theta, the side A is the adjacent side, B is the opposite side. So meaning to say we are going to apply the ratio of tan, remember from our soccer tower in this case, from our soccer tower, it follows that opposite adjacent is on tan. So tan of theta is equivalent to the opposite over the adjacent. So if the tan of theta is equivalent to the opposite over the adjacent, in this case, our opposite is B. So we are saying the tan of theta is equivalent to B over A, like this, which gives us now theta from the arctan. Are we seeing the concept? So meaning to say theta is going to be the equivalent of arctan B over A to find the actual value for theta, where B is our opposite, A is the adjacent. But this formula, guys, is not complete. I want you to understand this part. If you just say your theta is arctan B over A, then you write your answer. You'll be, you'll be wrong sometimes. When it is in the first quadrant or the fourth quadrant, there you can maybe by luck because your calculators, uh, it, it simplifies. But if you're, 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 let's say you're, you are given a condition like this, your complex number or the one that you're talking about is uh, in the second quadrant. This is our real axis. This is our imaginary axis like this. We are having this in the second quadrant. That is where we are having our, our resultant, like where we are having our A and our B, which is a negative A in this case. If you are to take note, your resultant in this case is not going to change. Resultant, whether this is a negative, this is a positive, this one does not affect us. So our resultant is not going to change. We are going to simply have our A squared plus B squared, which is fine. But if you are in the second quadrant, this angle that you are calculating from the arctan of opposite over adjacent, which is this opposite over adjacent, is not the exact angle that we need. The exact angle I said is from the positive real axis to the resultant. So meaning to say, when you calculate the arctan of B over A, you are calculating this angle that is inside the triangle, this one, inside our right angle triangle. This is the angle that you are calculating. Let us refer to as alpha. This is the angle that you are calculating. The theta that we are talking about, the angle, which is our argument in this case, is taken from the positive real axis from our, from our trigonometry there. From the positive real axis to the resultant, this is the angle that we are supposed to take, this one. This is what we refer to as your theta, which can be taken in this way, which is a positive angle, or you can take it this way, which represents a negative angle. Remember, this way, these are positive angles, this direction, these are negative angles. So meaning to say, this is how you are going to take your theta. So your theta now can be given, depending with how they give you, they can say, uh, your theta between 0 to 180, or they can say more than that, you, it depends with what you are given. Or your theta, let it be a negative angle, depending with how you are given that part. All right. So if you are given in this way, therefore your theta is going to be, you calculate your alpha, this one. Your alpha now, like I said, your alpha is going to be taken as, your alpha is going to be taken as actan of uh, B over A, actan of B over A. You obtain your angle, you take that angle as positive, take the angle as positive. Therefore, your theta now, it is going to be, if you take this theta, 
it is going to be 180 degrees minus the alpha, the one that you calculated here. Or you are going to say your theta, if you take the negative angle, this one from this side, this, this way, it is going to be minus 180. Since it's a, it's a negative angle, so it's going to be minus 180 minus alpha. That is for the negative angles. If you're talking about the positive angle, it is going to be 180 minus alpha. That is uh, from the second quadrant. So in the second quadrant, this is what we need to know. If your if your, if your triangle mean this, presentation that you are making is in the second quadrant if it is in the first quadrant there is no effect your your alpha this one is your theta so in the first quadrant there is no effect so it affects mostly the second the second quadrant also the second the third quadrant because you are going to have this way in the third quadrant uh let us see what you're going to have if you represent this account diagram you're going to have this way maybe uh your terms they fall in them in the third quadrant meaning to say we are going to have something like this uh that's what you're going to have here which is our real term that's negative a our ima uh, our imaginary part that will be a negative b like this so if you are to take into consideration the resultant is not going to change which is our r in this case our r is not going to change because this is in the negative side we are going to have square root of a squared plus b squared it's not going to change but the theta now the angle that you're going to calculate from arctan of uh, B over A is this alpha inside the triangle, this one. This is where you get your alpha, which is arctan of B over A. Negative B over this, it will be a positive. So remember, uh, B over A. So it will be B over A in this case. Which you are going to take the positive angle from there. You're going to take the positive angle. Take note. From this one, you take the positive answer. The, we are going to get a negative, but take the positive angle, the positive answer. If with this answer that we take as our positive, uh, our positive angle, which is alpha, therefore our theta now, which is the exact angle that I said is taken from always the positive real axis. So it's taken from the positive real axis. It can be in the anti-clockwise direction like this, or it can be in the clockwise direction, like, but taken from the positive real axis. So this is our this is our theta. So our theta uh, from this one that is in the in the anticlockwise. This is our positive angle. This one it is going to be now 180 plus alpha. You add. So this one is going to be 180 plus alpha. If you take the negative angle, let's say you want to choose this angle. Your theta is going to be minus 180 plus alpha or alpha minus one is so it's going to be minus uh, 180 plus alpha which is alpha minus 180 degrees this one is taken from your uh this, this is a, a recap also that helps you also in your in your trigonometry there so it's also this uh, approach that you use there so this is how you take your your angle theta uh the result in most of us uh, the result in there's no effect but most of us we make a mistake on finding the theta this theta part this one be very careful with where your quadrant is. All right, the last quadrant is uh, the fourth quadrant. You can present this. Your, your presentation can fall in the fourth quadrant. When it falls in the fourth quadrant like this, this is our real axis, our uh, imaginary axis, which is our J like this. So let's say it falls in the fourth uh, quadrant like this. This is what you're going to have. This is going to represent your... A real term, the imaginary part with the negative B like this from this part, negative B because it's below. So our resultant is not going to change. Guys, our resultant is always square root of A squared plus B squared. But now if you take a consideration, this is what is going to happen. This angle inside here is the one that you are going to calculate, which is your alpha. So your alpha does not change from its concept is going to be actan of uh, b over a opposite over just and always b over a so this one it is going to give us a negative because of the quadrant this is the quadrant for for course so you are going to obtain a negative answer but like i said if you take your answers as positive once you want to add something or to subtract something you are supposed to take as it is all right so i want you to take note about this part if you take this as a positive this alpha is a positive i want you to be to be, to be careful your answer is a, is, a, is, a, is a negative. Then you put it as a negative. Therefore, your theta now, depending with the, the, uh, the one that you're going to take, but always your theta, like I said, it's taken from uh, 
the positive real axis. So this is what you're going to have. This is our theta to the resultant. Or our theta is going to be taken from here, from the positive real axis to the resultant, meaning to say this can be our theta. This can be our theta in this way. So meaning to say from the first approach that we are having, uh, this one of the positive, our theta is going to be 360 degrees minus the alpha. This alpha being a positive, or I take note, taking your alpha as a positive. Or we are going to have our theta as, from this part, the, the direction tells us that this theta is a negative angle. So our theta is going to be negative alpha. Remember, our alpha always, we are taking it as a positive angle. But now we are saying theta is equal to minus alpha, meaning to say that positive answer we are going to multiply it by a negative or simply the first alpha that you got that was a positive before that was a negative before is the one that you're simply going to to use all right so this is how you calculate your theta guys this is how you calculate the argument this is uh, how you use this argument that you're saying uh in polar form we need the resultant uh, which is our magnitude and also the argument so the argument which is our theta is the one that has got the most effect in consideration. So also in polar form, this presentation of R angle theta like this can be given as R Z is equal to R cis theta like this. R uh, cis theta like this. That is R angle theta. So you can they can give you this way or they can give you this way. It's simply one and the same thing. Uh, so what we need is to know how to work with this a, a polar form if we are to take this back to our consideration we are going to see that this can be given a back in the rectangular form as z is equal to r cos of theta plus uh, r sine of theta like this so this is now a presentation that we can take from this format from that is from polar form to rectangular form we are going to have as R is equal to uh, Z is equal to R cos theta plus J sine theta, which represents the real term and the imaginary term. So this is how you can convert from this polar form to rectangular form. Let's say you want to convert from rectangular form to polar form. You can simply use this formula. All right. So in our polar form, this one, how do we simplify? How do we work with the polar form this is what we want to understand how do we actually work with our polar form uh so this is the argand diagram first of a polar form so let us just give an emphasis of the argand diagram so that we can see the simplification later on of the polar form from the argand diagram that we are given let's say we okay let me just write as a subheading we are now saying we've got our argand diagram just like the previous part we got an argand diagram in rectangular form so if we are given an argand diagram in this case for a rec uh, for a polar form for a polar form you will be given like this indicate on an argand diagram maybe you calculated uh everything now it's in polar form then they ask you to present in the in the in, in, to represent on the polar uh, in that polar form on the argand diagram at a later stage after your calculations your z being given as r angle of theta like this or maybe you simplified your z as r cis theta like this they will ask you to present this on the argon diagram let's say for an example we are given z which is equal to five angle of 30 degrees like this so what you're going to do is to take note of the angle that you're given is it positive or negative positive angles meaning to say we are going in the anti-clockwise direction this is for positive angles for negative angles we are going in the clockwise direction which is our normal direction that is for negative angles this arrow that we see here this five here is for the resultant so that's your resultant so meaning to say what we need is the angle first the resultant does not affect us the angle first where do we have 30 degrees is it in the first quadrant we can see that 30 degrees lies in the first quadrant it's it's a uh, below so this is our real this is our imaginal so 30 degrees is below 90 degrees that's from 0 to 90 remember we said it's a positive angle so it's in the first quadrant so we are going to have our angle of 30 degrees approximately like this 
So this is where we have got our 30 degrees like this from uh, the real axis like this. This is where we have our 30 degrees. With the resultant of 5, so this is where we are going to have our resultant, which is equal to, to 5. So that is how you present it in the, in the polar form. We will need to see the angle and the resultant. So like I said, the angle is very, very important because if it was given like this, Z is equal to 5 angle of minus 30 degrees. It means that we were going to take the angle in the this the clockwise direction. Where are we having a negative in the clockwise direction? So meaning to say we were going to have on our argand diagram our real axis, our imaginary axis, negative 30, just below this part, just below 90 degrees. So this is where we are going to have our angle of negative uh, 30 degrees, where our resultant is still at five. So our resultant here is at five. So that is how you present the argon diagram for a polar form. So it depends with where you are given your angle. Uh, let us just give the last example so you can try as much as you can. Maybe we are given that RZ is equal to, uh, we are given our Z, which is equal to the square root of two, angle of 130 degrees, or they might write as z is equal to uh, the square root of 2 cis uh, 130 degrees. Like it's still in polar form. This is still a polar form. So 130 degrees is a positive angle, yes. But which quadrant do we find 130 degrees? Is it in the first quadrant? Is it in the second quadrant? So the 130 degrees lies in the second quadrant. This is where we can approximate 130. This is a 0, uh, 90, uh, 180, 270, back to 360. So uh, 130 is just between 90 and uh, 180. So this is how we can locate our angles in this case. All right. So meaning to say 130 degrees, this is where we are going to have our angle. But like I said, it's taken from the positive real axis. 130 meaning to say it's anti-clockwise direction. So we're going to have this in the anti-clockwise direction direction up to the result and so this is where we are having our 130 degrees with our resultant being the square root of two so our r in this case is being the square root of two in this case you write the r as you are given all right so this is how you present uh your complex numbers in this case on the Gandhi diagram that is uh, for a polar form as you can see is just similar from that one that we had which was in rectangular form. All right, so let us see the simplification in polar form. How do we operate in polar form? Just like in a Cartesian form or rectangular form, we had got multiplication, division, this and that. All right, so we're going to talk about the multiplication. Uh, the addition I'm going to talk about later on because that one you need to convert to rectangular form. So I'm going to focus on the multiplication division. So we have got uh, multiplication here. So we've got the multiplication, uh, multiplication and the division and the division in a polar form. All right. Multiplication and the division in a polar form. So do not confuse with what we had before. Before we had multiplication and division, which was in rectangular form. So this time you'll be given two complex numbers. Let us start with the multiplication part. Uh, so the multiplication, let's say we are given Z1 in the polar form which is equal to r1 angle of theta one like this or it might be given as a z1 is equal to r1 uh cis theta like this so that's cis theta one and also we are given z2 which is equal to r2 angle theta two like this or it can be given as a z2 is equal to r2 uh, cis theta two like this. This is a presentation of both in polar form. So for multiplication, it follows that Z1 by Z2, that is our multiplication. When you are multiplying in polar form, you multiply the real terms together. So you're going to multiply R1 by R2. So this is going to be R1 by R2, all right? R1 by R2. For the angles, you add them in polar form. So that's angle theta 1 plus theta 2. So in polar form, the angles, you add them. So if you are using this presentation of the cis part, this one, you're going to simply have the same way. This is going to be R1, R2 multiplied. Then we are going to have cis 
theta 1 plus theta 2. Same answer, same approach. Or you can present in form of an angle. If you want, you can change to that format. All right. So this is uh, how you multiply in complex, uh, that, that is uh, in, a, in a polar form. Let's say we are given, a, so they can give us these in, a, in a whatever form it can be, uh, as long as angles, they can be radians, it can be degrees. All right. So let, let us just say for division so that we can have examples at once. So for division, it follows that Z1 over Z2, that's for division. It means we are dividing Z1, Z2, this part as it is. So that's a presentation like Z1, which is R1. You divide the numbers. This time you divide the numbers together. So this is, okay, let me present this way. Theta 1 over R2, Theta 2, like this. You divide the real terms, these ones, together. So you're going to have this as R1 over R2. So that's R1 over R2. The angles, just like what we saw previously, this time the angles should be separated again. So you subtract when you're dividing. That's theta 1 minus theta 2. So the, uh, the resultants, you are going to add it, you divide them together. But the angles, which is your arguments, you subtract them. So this is your resultant, this is your argument. So what am I trying to say is that we might be given a complex number, like for us to simplify or to evaluate given, uh, let's say we are given in this case, uh, Z1 and Z2, given that Z1 is equal to three angle of 40 degrees. So given Z1 being three angle of 40 degrees and our Z2, being a uh, four angle of 50 degrees like this. Then we are asked to evaluate from this part. We are asked to evaluate or to find uh, the first one, Z1 by Z2. Uh, the second question, Z1 over Z2. All right. So for the first part that we are given, Z1 by Z2 simply means you are multiplying. That's our Z1, which is three angle of uh, 40 degrees in polar form, multiplied to Z2 which is a four angle of uh, 50 degrees. So what you're going to do is to, uh, in polar form, remember you multiply the resultants together. That's R1 by R2. So that's three and four. So you multiply three times four, which is going to give us a 12. For the angles, you add them. That is going to be theta one plus theta two. So this is going to be theta, which is uh, our theta 40 degrees plus theta two, which is uh, 50 degrees. So you add the angles together. So 40 plus uh, 50 degrees, which is going to give us uh, 90 degrees at the end. So this is going to be 12 angle of 40 plus 50, which is uh, 90 degrees. So this is what you're going to have at the end in a polar form. All right, for the division part in this case, this one of Z1 over Z2, we are going to apply the same concept in this case. So our Z1, over Z2 is supposed to be written as Z1, which is a three angle of uh, 40 degrees like this over Z2, which is four angle of uh, 50 degrees. So in our division, we said we are going to divide the real terms together. So we're going to divide in this case, three and uh, four together. That is a uh, three over four. So this is going to be three over four angle of, you subtract the angles. So this is 40, minus 50, which is going to give us negative uh, 10 degrees. So that is what you're going to have, or you can write it as a decimal or just leave it as a fraction like that. So this is how you uh, work with the polar form in terms of multiplication and division. When you are multiplying, know exactly what you're dealing with. Is it in polar form? Is it in rectangular form? So, and also the conversion part, like I said, we can have a conversion later on. Uh, let me just have this way. We can have a conversion that can take place. Like for an example, we are given Z being equivalent to four angle of 30 degrees like this. This is in polar form or four, six, uh, 30 degrees like this. this is in polar form. They can ask you to write this in a rectangular form or you need to convert this to a rectangular format. So for you now to convert from polar form to rectangular format, the rectangular format is the one that uses R plus or minus. Okay, that is A here. So the format is uh, Z is equal to A plus or minus JB. So we need the part that has got the imaginary term that is for it to be rectangular. So meaning to say, 
we are going to change this one from our formula that we said our complex number from an angle can be given as z is equal to r cos theta plus rj sine of theta like this. So this is what you're going to have. So your z in rectangular form is going to be your ra which is 4. So that's for cos theta, the angle, whether it's a minus, whether it's a whatever angle that you are given. But when you are given pi over 2 or 3 pi over 4, it means your calculator has to be in radians. You change your calculator to radians. These are degrees. You can see here yeah, there's a degree. Here yeah, there's a degree there. So this one is in degrees. So it's a 4 cos 30 degrees plus rj which is our r in this case which is 4 so this is going to be 4j sine theta our theta which is a 30 degrees in this case all right so this is how you convert to a rectangular form so meaning to say from this part or oh, you can just use your calculator to i'm going to show you later on so here you can use our calculator at uh, for cos four cos uh 30 degrees and so on all right so let us just have our calculator here so that we can see uh how to simplify uh this part all right so let me have it this way so that we can see this part here so this is what we have uh we are going to use our calculator make sure it's in degrees so the, you see my calculator there is r here so it means i have to change this one to degrees degrees which is three so now there's a d if there is already a d there don't change if there is a d like this don't change anything it's already in degrees so that's four cos uh 30 degrees like this which is going to give us two square root of three or as a decimal three comma four six four that three comma four six four so you're going to have uh three comma four six four like this all right we move on to the uh j part here the j part we have got this is a j so the j is going to remain as it is so you simplify four sine 30 4 sine 30 this is the part that you simplify all right so let us see this part so it's 4 sine 30 degrees like this which is going to give us a 2 so we are going to have a 2 so but there is a j here so it's going to be plus j2 like this so as you can see this is a complex number that you can see it's uh, in a uh, uh, rectangular form, Cartesian form, the one that we are used to. So this is how we can simply change. Or you can use your calculator to confirm. Remember, our Z was given as a uh, four angle of 30 degrees here, four angle of 30. So you can use your calculator to simplify this one direct. This is what you do on your calculator. You change from, you want to convert to rectangular form. So on your calculator, it's a shift. You, you go to the rectangular form here, where it's written RCE on a main as this is rectangular form. So it's a shift rectangular form. So it writes here rectangular form. So you press this four, so that's four. You separate by this comma here on this bracket. So it's shift comma like this. You press 30 degrees. So that is 30, it's now in degrees. So your calculator knows everything, which is equal to so once you give this, once you write it like this, it gives you the value of X, remember, and the value of Y. They expect you in this calculator, they expect you to say your Z can be given as X plus or minus JY like this. So they give you the value of X for the real term, the value of Y for the imaginary term. So this is what you're going to get, the same answer as this one that you got. Let us check on, your cal on our calculator. As you can see, our X is 3, 464 which is the same x3 comma 464 then the y part here is the part that has got j our y here is equal to 2 so you can use your calculator to confirm or to convert to a rectangular from the polar form this is what you simply do on your calculator all right so this is uh how you can use your calculator guys to convert to rectangular form but i'm not focusing about this much uh i want to focus on this polar form then we've got the last part that you're going to do this one you're going to talk about it from our question papers but i want you to just know this is the last part of our complex so the last part is uh, the d moves theorem which is the one that we uh this one i'm going to use it uh on the last part as we are going to use on the question papers uh that the d moves uh, theorem i don't know how do you actually pronounce this one all right so it actually states that if you are given a complex number uh, that is being raised to a certain exponent z being raised to exponent of n uh, which is uh, which can be written in a rectangular form remember in rectangular form we have got x 
plus JY like this or A plus uh, A plus JB, which is one and the same thing. This can be raised to a certain exponent of N again. Whenever we've got this condition, we convert this part to a, a polar form. You convert to polar form where you write it as R angle of theta. Remember in polar form, that's how you write in polar form. But being raised to the exponent of N, which is, which is going to give us the theorem now states that R will be raised to the exponent of N. So that's R to the exponent of N times N here, the angle, you multiply it by N, which is our number here that is on top. So meaning to say you raise your resultant to the exponent of N, the argument, you multiply it by theta. So that's how you simplify any complex number that is being raised to the exponent of what? To the exponent of N. So on the conversion part, uh, this one, like I said, in the, in the, in rectangular form, we shall talk about this uh, later on. But uh, what you simply need is maybe you are given a condition of uh, 3 plus J4. This is in rectangular form. And you want to convert this to polar form. We talked about converting from polar form to rectangular form. But what about from rectangular to polar form? That is where you use those diagrams that I was talking about. In the, which quadrant is it? But just a basic approach here. You need uh, uh, your arc and diagram. So you, you're going to need an arc and diagram where you are going to see where exactly are you going to have your theta. The real is positive. The imaginary is positive, meaning to say this is in the first quadrant. So we are going to have our real being a positive 3, our imaginary this side being a positive 4. So this is where we are having our imaginary. So meaning to say this is going to be our theta, which is a positive angle. As you can see, it's going in the anti-clockwise direction and this is our r which is our resultant remember in polar form we want to convert to polar form and in polar form it must be r angle theta like this so meaning we are supposed to calculate the value of r from our pythagoras theorem a squared this is your a this is your b so r is equal to the square root of a squared plus b squared which is r is equal to the square root of three squared uh, plus four squared, which is going to give us a five in this case. So meaning to say we are going to have our R being our five. Then theta, like I said, is taken from the opposite over the adjacent, which is B over A. We say theta is taken from alpha, where alpha is equivalent to actan uh, B over A. So that's actan B over A. So our alpha in this case is going to be actan, uh, that is uh, B over A, which is 4 over 3. So on your calculator, this one, you can simply use your calculator. That's, uh, let me show you the other part of the screen here. So that is Actan shift. So Actan, it's a shift. Make sure that your calculator is also in degrees. So it's shift, then turn here, which is uh, 4 over 3. So that's Actan 4 over 3 like this, which is going to give us 53.130 degrees. So we've got uh, 53 Point one three degrees. All right. So, like I said, guys, if you are working from the first quadrant, if you are working for with the first quadrant, your theta is equal to alpha. In the first quadrant, is the same. This theta that we see is the same as the alpha that we are calculating. So, our theta in this case is the same as alpha, which is equal to fifty three point one three degrees. So, therefore, it means that our z, which is our complex number z in a polar form is going to be taken as R, which is 5, angle of theta, which is 53.13 degrees like this. All right. But let's say they asked you to you take this theta to be a negative angle. How were you going to write your theta as a negative angle? You were going to take your theta, because I said theta is taken from the positive real axis to the resultant. So you can take it this way in the, uh, in the clockwise direction. So if we take it this way, our theta now, was going to be 360 degrees, going to be uh, this alpha minus 360 degrees so that it gives us a negative angle. This is how we could have written again our theta as, depending with how you are asked this question. So that's why I said for a polar form of conversion to polar form, this one I want us to work with question paper so that we understand how do they ask these questions and uh, uh, also the simplification part. So this is what you're going to have, guys, working with question papers now uh, so that we conclude this whole part of uh, complex numbers. But for any questions that we are going to skip, make sure that we mention them on the comment section uh, so that we can uh, make sure that we are together. And also the other thing, guys, uh, before 
we proceed to question papers i also want i also want you guys to join uh, the membership platform, the membership platform uh, of uh, Medzone African Motives, this our channel. Uh, by joining the membership, it helps us to produce a lot of videos, uh, to produce even videos with uh, uh, like the time frame that we are focusing on. Like this video that I'm actually working on is due to the members who have joined our membership. Uh, we uh, will be asking for this for these topics to be done. So what I want you guys is to join the membership so that it helps us to reach a lot of people outside there. Uh, they need this information. So if you join, guys, you are helping us a lot. You are helping us even to improve in whatever that we are doing. Uh, it, we, you give us that zeal to work on more things, uh, on more question papers, on more topics, uh, so that we help others uh, who are to come. So guys, please, uh, uh, I want you as a team to join the membership platform so that this can help us reach as many souls as we can. All right, guys, I think uh, we shall talk about this, but if you just check on our YouTube, on the YouTube, as, as you are watching, on the, there's a there's a join, there's a, there's a, that, that is written join there. If we just, uh, it will show you the steps on how to join uh, the, the payments which are needed there and uh, so that you can join, so that you can save another another person outside there who is in need of this information uh the same as you are but it helps us now to work on more content on more videos uh like i said all right guys like i said let us work with more question papers now all right so our first question here is uh to that was question number four we are asked to solve for x and y if we are given this uh complex equation so remember we talked about uh, complex equations before. So this is what you're given four marks for that. All right, so let me just try to increase it this way. So we are given to solve this and we've got four marks for that. All right, so that is our first question from the question papers uh, where we are given in this case uh, seven plus J five, everything over minus J plus two equal to uh 1,8 x plus j3 comma 4 y like this all right so this is uh what we are given and we are asked you to solve for x and y we are asked you to solve for x and y so if you are to take a consideration we said whenever you're given a, an equation what you need is to formulate in a form that you are going to have the left hand side being equal to the right hand side a plus uh, bj or jb is equivalent to x plus uh j y like this we know that a will be equal to x uh, and uh, b is equal to y so this is the concept that you're going to take from this part or you're simply taking this part as j b and j y then you cancel the j all right so but first to simplify so that both here the right hand side is fine but if we check on our left hand side we've got a fraction that we need to consider so this simplification uh j minus j plus 2 is same as 2 minus j the same as minus 1 plus 2 which is same as 2 minus 1 so meaning to say we can rewrite this as a 2 minus j first before uh we talk of the simplification so this part here this one we can just rewrite as a 2 minus j so this is 2 minus j like this all right so waking from the left hand side i said a fraction must not contain a j in the denominator our denominator is always supposed to be a real term so how can we obtain a real term from our denominator okay sorry for this guys uh i was increasing the other thing else i was actually increased something else so how can we obtain a real term here how is it possible to obtain a real term that is where we introduce the complex conjugate so meaning to say we are going to have 7 plus j5 over 2 minus j2 multiplied by the complex conjugate of the denominator where we introduce a negative in the imaginary part so a negative and a negative gives us a positive so it will be 2 plus j like this over 2 plus j so this is what we are going to have uh from our left hand side everything being equal to 1,8x plus uh, j3 comma 4 y like this so we're going to simplify as usual like i said you're going to expand the brackets from the numerator here uh that is going to be 7 times 2 which is going to be 14 
uh, then we can multiply 7 times 8J, uh, which is going to be J7 or 7J. This one, 7 and a J. We're done with 7. Uh, we move on to uh, 5 and uh, 2 here, J5 and 2, which is going to be J10. So that will be a J10. Then we've got J5 and J here, which is going to be plus J squared. So we've got plus J squared five times. This is same as one. So five times one is a five. All right. Then from our denominator here, we said from our simplification of a real, I mean, of a complex number to its complex conjugate. When it is multiplied, this is going to give us uh, a squared plus B squared. So that's A squared plus B squared in short. So meaning to say, our A being 2, so this is going to give us 2 squared plus our B being a 1. So here there's a 1, here there's a 1. So this is same as 1 squared. Or you simply expand the brackets just like what we did on top. So this is equal to 1,8x plus J uh, 3,4y like this. All right, so simplify collecting like terms where we understand that J squared is a minus 1. So plus and minus gives us a minus. So it is going to be uh, 14 minus five is plus minus five which is going to give us a nine in this case j7 and j10 we add these are the imaginary terms seven plus ten which is 17 so that's j17 over uh five two squared plus one squared gives us a five so this is going to give us a uh, one comma eight x plus j three comma four y like this all right so if we are to simplify just because we can see that this we have got the real term imaginary term so we are going to write in terms of that the real term together thus we take 9 and 5 17 and 5 together so we are going to separate this part so we are going to have 9 over 5 plus j 17 over 5 which is equal to 1 comma 8 x plus j 3 comma 4 y in this okay in this case all right so this we can write as a decimal if you express 9 over 5 as a decimal, it gives us 1,4. If you divide from a calculator, that's 1,8. So we are going to obtain 1,8 plus 17 over 5. It gives us 3,4. So this is J, 3,4, which is equal to 1,8 in this case, X plus J, 3,4 Y like this. So like I said, once you are given this format, when the left-hand side and the right-hand side are both in rectangular form, in their simplest form, you can equate the real terms together. That is the real terms. We are talking about uh, 1,8 versus 1,8x. So that's an equation that you are formulating. So we're going to have 1,8 being equal to the real term here where there is no j, so that's 1,8x. So to find x is an equation, you can divide by 1,8, by 1,8 both sides. So that's x is going to be a one. So we are going to obtain a one in this case. Uh, for the value of y, we take the imaginary part, which is the j part. So that's a positive j, uh, three comma four is equal to the j part here, which is also a positive. So that's positive j, 3,4y like this. So as you can see, the j and the j will cancel. 3,4 and 3,4 will cancel. So that's a 1 here. So y is simply equivalent to 1. So that is what we are going to have. So at the end, we are saying x is equal to 1, y is equal to 1. So this is how we can solve our equations that is uh, in um, rectangular form, uh, the rectangular form from the concept that for us to have this in rectangular form, we must have the left-hand side being equal to the right-hand side. All right, let us check the other part of our question, which is uh, 4.2. We are given to simplify this, uh, that's 4.2 in this case, minus 4 minus j to the exponent of 5. Leave your answer in a rectangular form. That's four marks for that. All right, so how do we simplify this type of equation? Remember what I was saying about the Dimov's theorem to say, we can simplify exponents uh, like uh, we, we are given uh, uh, terms which are being raised to a certain exponent. So that was minus 4 minus j to the exponent of 5 like that. If you take a consideration with a condition where z was being raised to the exponent of n, and I said this is given in the form of x plus jy like this to the exponent of n, which is uh, in a rectangular form, which you can write in polar form as r angle of theta, to the exponent of n. 
which gives us r to the exponent of any angle you multiply the angle and n which is going to be n theta so this is the most important part that you're going to have so we are ought to convert this first to polar form because this law is applied not in rectangular form because there's no way in we are going to have this in rectangular form it is applied from the polar form this is where we have application of the law so meaning to say this theorem we must use it when we are in polar form so what you're going to do is to convert these two to polar form depending with the way you are going to have your angle so like i said to convert to polar form first you need the argand diagram in polar form z is equal to r angle of theta but theta depends with the way you are going to have your quadrant where are you going to have this in the argand diagram minus four minus j let us save this we are want to convert to polar form so convert to polar form first uh convert to polar form so we are going to convert to polar form in this case so to convert to polar form we need the argand diagram which shows us where are we having exactly our our angle in this case so the the, the argand diagram is just only for the angle not for the resultant the resultant does not if it is not affected by the, the 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 quadrant what is affected is the angle the theta remember that's why i was saying theta is equal to this from the quadrant okay anyways the our real term it's a negative which is negative four so that is where we have our real terms here so let's say this is where we have got our negative four uh then the imaginary is negative j remember this is our j negative one it's uh in the uh, this side this is a zero here let's say this is where we put our negative one meaning to say we're supposed to have where these two meet we're supposed to have it this way where these two meet at this point this is where we are supposed to have our point at where we are simply saying the distance from this point to this point is negative four the distance from this point to this point is negative one so this is going to be our resultant and our theta now is the angle but inside this triangle here there is no theta there is alpha which is the angle between these two points which is your alpha then the theta depending with what you're going to do you're going to take this theta here or you're going to take this theta so it's going to depend which which theta are you, are, are you going to take which theta are you going to take there all right so if you are to take this theta as a positive angle it means your theta is going to be 180 degrees plus the alpha or if you are to take your theta as a negative angle this way your theta like i said it is going to be alpha our theta is going to be equivalent to alpha minus 180 in the third quadrant. Remember what I said in the third quadrant. So this is the purpose of our uh, argand diagram to show the theta, not the result. The result is not affected. So meaning to say our R here is going to be, say, the square root of A squared plus B squared. So R is going to be equal to uh, the square root of our A, which is negative 4. So that's negative 4 squared plus b squared which is negative one squared or you can write them as positive values so this is going to be, give us the square root of 17 at the end all right so we've got our resultant then the theta taken from alpha so first you calculate alpha so alpha is equivalent to actan uh negative negative b over a so uh, b over a which is in this case that's uh, according to this this is opposite over the adjacent so that's negative one over negative four so it's going to be actan of the opposite which is our b negative one over negative four in this case all right so that's our alpha in this case and this alpha always take it as a positive whether your calculator gives you a negative or what but this one it was going to be a positive uh 14 comma 036 make sure that your calculator is in degrees so like i said depending with the theta that you're going to take in polar form this part here alone this part here alone this part it is now going to be affected by the theta the theta this one which we said it is going to be taken from 180 plus alpha that is for the positive angle or theta is going to be alpha minus 184 the negative angle so if we are taking the positive angle so if we are taking the positive angle our theta is going to be 180 plus alpha so our theta is going to be 180 plus 14 comma so we are going to add 14 comma 036 uh so that is going to be our theta in this case so this theta is going to give us 194 
comma 0, 036 uh, degrees. All right. For the negative angle, our theta was supposed to be alpha minus 180, which is our alpha, which is uh, 14, comma 0, 036 degrees minus the angle, which is uh, the one that we are given of 180, alpha minus 180 in this case. So if we subtract, we are going to obtain a negative angle there of uh, negative 165, comma uh, 964 degrees. So this theta here depends which, which one are you going to use, all right? So in this case, I'm going to take the positive angle. Normally, we use the theta that is below, nine, below 180. It depends with what you want. But in this case, I, I'm going to take this positive angle here. If you are working with the memo, uh, take note, this answer was actually a wrong answer that was there because this is supposed to be a positive angle that you are dealing with. We, we add 180 plus 14, comma, which is going to be 194, comma, 036 degrees in this case. So take note, if you are working this from the memo, I think this was uh, something like April something exam, April 2018, I think so. So just, just cross-check again. All right, so this is what you're going to have. We said we need... To have this in polar form so that we can apply our Dimov's theorem here. So meaning to say, now we are going to have our Z. Our Z in this case is going to be, like I said, I'm going to choose the positive angle. So our Z is going to be R, which is our R in this case, square root of 17. So we are going to have the square root of 17 angle of theta. Our theta here, which is uh, 194,036 degrees. That is, we have converted this part, which was in a rectangular form, to polar form. So now we are having this in polar form. But take note, our z, or this polar form that we have, it's being raised to the exponent of 5. So we are going to have our z here being also raised, everything being raised to the exponent of 5. So this is z to the exponent of n, which is 5 in this case. So we are told that, if we are given a condition like this, that a complex number in a polar form like this is being raised to a certain exponent, we can apply our Dimov's theorem, which says that R is going to be raised to the exponent of n, which is the power that we are given or the exponent. So meaning to say our z is going to be the square root of 17, which is our resultant, the square root of 17 to the exponent of 5. The angle is going to be multiplied by the n, the exponent that you are given, meaning to say this angle of 194 is going to be multiplied by 5. So it's 5 times the angle of 194,036 uh, degrees. So meaning to say we have applied or we have used this exponent of n. That is the application of the Dimov's theorem. So therefore, our z is going to remain as the square root of 17 to the exponent of 5. That's something like 1,191,578. Then the angle of, you multiply this one by this one, which is going to be 97,018 degrees. So if you used the negative, this one, you can use this angle, like I said, the negative angle, still you are going to have the same answer. All right. The answer that you're going to have, the same answer is the one that you're going to have in rectangular form. Because remember here, we are told that all right, where is uh, our question? I think it's above here, above. We are told that our answer here is supposed to be in rectangular form. This is the, 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 the instruction that you're given. Leave your answer in rectangular form. So what I'm saying is that either way, whether you worked with the negative or you worked with the positive, this answer that you're going to have should be in rectangular form. So the conversion part that we did was to make this, to apply the Dimov's theorem. That is why we had to convert this part that was in a rectangular form. Or someone might wonder to say, why are we converting to rectangular form if we need our answer again in rectangular form? For us to convert, we need to apply the Dimov's theorem like this. After you've applied your Dimov's theorem, you converted to polar form, you have applied your Dimov's theorem like this, you have got your Z in this way, you now convert this back to rectangular form because your answer is needed in rectangular form. So we convert this back to rectangular form where I said you can use your calculator direct or you can use the format to say if Z is in, comp in a polar form as R theta, in a rectangular form, it is going to be R cos of theta plus Rj sine of theta. So meaning to say 
we have got our R here. This is our theta. So our Z is going to be R in this case, which is uh, 1191, 578 cos of theta. This is our theta, 970, 180 degrees. Plus RJ, our R, which is uh, 1,191, 578 J sine theta. So this is going to be J sine of theta which is sine of the angle that we are given our angle of 970,18 degrees so this gives us our z in rectangular so this is a conversion from polar form to rectangular form that's how you convert so meaning to say your z is going to be something like negative 4043,0242 uh three decimal places then here we simplify this part here and the sign of this angle here, we simplify with the sign of this angle. The J is going to remain as it is. So meaning to say whatever that you get, you multiply with a J. So this is going to give us a negative. That's negative J1120,992. So this is what you're supposed to obtain now in rectangular form. So take note of the instruction that you're given converting of angles later on to the one that you are given by the instruction all right so this is how we could have simplified this question all you need is to convert to polar form after converting to polar form you change that to rectangular form which you can use your calculator to prove or to convert to to polar form from rectangular form all right now we got question 4.3 determine the argument and the modulus of so the question is to determine the argument and the modulus of the this part so in order for you to have the argument and the result uh, and the the modulus the modulus is our magnitude this is our magnitude this one that is what we refer as the modulus which is the resultant that's our resultant so that is a resultant in this case so the argument is our angle theta Meaning to say we must have something in the form Z is equal to R theta, where we see our magnitude, which is our modulus, and our angle, which is theta. So here, take note of what you're given. These are in polar form. Remember I said where there is a cis here, where we see this cis here, it simply means that we are in polar form, which can be given in, 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 in any way in any way which can use the cis as it is or you can change to the normal format that you are used to which is two angle of minus 60 degrees multiplied to uh five angle of 45 degrees this is same concept or same way everything over here we simply write this as four angle of 33 degrees like this multiplied to three cis 21 which is a three angle of uh, negative 21 degrees this is what we are used to so meaning to say we can uh, simplify the numerator separately then we simplify denominator again separately so on top here we are multiplying remember what i said for the multiplication in polar form r1 uh, angle of theta one when multiplied to R2, angle of theta 2, like this, you multiply the numbers together, the, the modulus together, the resultant, and you add the angles, that is theta 1 plus theta 2. For the division, if you are given R1, theta 1, like this, over R2, angle theta 2, you divide the real terms, which is uh, the resultant in this case, the angles you subtract, that's theta 1 minus theta 2. So don't forget this part. So meaning to say our Z in this case from this same application is going to give us on top, like I said, you are multiplying. So you're going to multiply two times five, which is going to give us a 10. Angle of, you add the angles, negative 60 plus 45 degrees. So you add negative 60 plus 45 degrees. So this is going to give us a uh, negative uh, 15 degrees. All right, we are done on top. Uh, below you do the same you are multiplying so you're going to multiply the numbers together four and three four times three which is 12 the angles when you are multiplying you add them so you're going to add 33 degrees to negative 21 so this is 33 plus minus 21 which is going to give us a uh, positive 12 in this case which is 12 degrees so meaning to say we are left with 12 degrees now we are left with a division. We are done with the, our multiplication. We are just left with a division. On division, we are saying we divide the real 
term which is the resultant together, the modulus together, the magnitude together, which is R1 and R2. So this is what you're going to do. You are going to divide 10 and 12 together. So this is going to give us uh, 10 over 12 angle of the angles you subtract theta 1 minus theta 2. So meaning to say you're going to subtract 50, minus 15 minus 12. So this is minus 15 degrees, minus 12 degrees, which is going to give us negative 27 degrees, which you can also write as a decimal. Uh, you can simplify further as a decimal. That's something like 0 0.833 angle of negative 27 degrees. So the question was not to simplify this. It is to start to determine what is your argument there? What is your modulus? So like I said, uh, if we are given in the form of this, that is our R angle of theta, where R is our modulus. So therefore, our modulus in this case is equal to 0 0.833, all right, which you can take as a fraction. That will be 5 over 6, all right? And our argument is the angle. So our argument, which is the angle theta, is equivalent to negative 27 degrees. Answer the question. Argument is the angle. Modulus, that's your resultant, which is your R. So this is how you are given these uh, typical questions. Like I said, uh, let us check the other part uh, so that we can conclude. Uh, we are given this question, uh, 2.1, uh, that is to solve for X, all right? So in this case, we are given to solve for X four marks for that. All right, so this is a quadratic equation that you are used to. So what you do is to cross-check from your quadratic formula. You try to solve this using your quadratic formula where we understand that X is equivalent to minus B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC, everything over 2A. Remember what I said, guys? So this is our A, our B, our C. This is straight, so you can just substitute here. So X is minus B, which is minus 2 plus or minus the square root of b squared, so that will be 2 squared minus 4ac, our a, which is a 2 in this case, so that's 4 times 2 times c, which is a 1, everything over 2a. Remember what I said, whenever you're solving a quadratic equation, don't use your calculator at once, simplify what is inside of the square root. So you're going to simplify what is inside of the square root, so our x is going to give us negative 2, plus or minus the square root, you're going to obtain a negative 4 after simplifying this. Everything over 2 times 2, which is a 4. Obtaining the square root of a negative tells us that we can't simplify this on our calculator. So we introduce the J part where we say the square root of a negative is simply a J. So meaning to say uh, X is equivalent to minus 2 plus or minus the square root of a negative, which is a J. Then we, have, we are left with the square root of 4. What is the square root of 4? That's a 2. So we're going to have 2 with our plus or minus everything over 4. So remember, guys, for us, we, we are done like this, but we can just write in the form uh, x is equivalent to a plus or minus jb, where we can have a plus and a j. So you see we are separating the real terms and the imaginary part. So meaning to say we are going to have our x as minus 2 over 4. So that's minus 2 over for in this case, uh, plus j2 over 4. So it is going to be 2 over 4. Or another x is going to be minus 2 over 4, minus 2 over 4, minus j2 over 4, which you can simplify. Uh, this is going to be a negative half or negative 0, 0,5. That's negative half plus j a half, which is 1 over 2. Or x can be given as a negative half minus j1 over 2. So these are the possible values of x, which we can also just leave at that stage where you can simplify at least. But in terms of uh, our rectangular form, this is the format that is uh, being required. All right. So that is uh, our question uh, 2.1 in this case. 2.2, we are given a complex number z, which is given as j, j square root of 5 minus 1 from this complex number, the question is find Z, the bar that we see here, this bar on top here represents the conjugate, that one, that's one, the conjugate of a complex number, this, this bar that we see on top here, this one on top, it represents the conjugate of a complex number. And I said the conjugate of a complex number is the introduction of a J. The complex of a con uh, is the introduction of a negative on the J. So this one, let us write it properly. It was supposed to be 
minus one like this plus j square root of five. That is the normal way, starting with the real term. So meaning to say we introduce a negative on the j part, on the imaginary part. So this will be minus one. If we introduce a negative here, that will be a negative j square root of five like this. So this is uh, what we want from this part. So this is our uh, conjugate, the z. This bar here represents the, the, the conjugate. Like they can put a star like this. It's still the same thing is the conjugate. All right. Then 2.2. Find the modulus. All right, so here they want us to say to cal calculate uh, the modulus, to find the modulus and argument of, take note, Z bar, which means the argument from the argument. That is the argument must only, take note, guys, what they are saying. Uh, I mean, from the, the, the conjugate, from this one, the Z bar from our conjugate. All right, this is our conjugate here, from our conjugate. But they are saying, on this one, the theta, which is our argument, because we want the modulus and the argument, the argument must only be positive. They've given you an instruction to take that it must be only be positive. All right. So the first thing is we are dealing with the modulus and the argument of what? The conjugate. We meaning to say we are focusing on the conjugate, not on the original the complex number that we're given to no we are focusing on the conjugate meaning to say this one so this is the one that we are going to focus on uh so this is uh four point uh 2.3 2.22 so we need uh our z bar which is given as uh, uh negative one negative j square root of five so we need to calculate in this case we need to find the modulus in this case and the argument but definitely for you to have the modulus and the argument, which is our theta, definitely it means that we are talking about the polar form. The polar form is the one that has got this, where z is given in the form of r theta. And I say the easiest way is to have it on the diagram so that you properly see where you are going to have your theta. All right, so this is our imaginary. Um, all right, so we are given negative one for the real part. So that's negative one. So we've got negative one somewhere here. The imaginary part is minus square root of five, maybe minus square root of five is somewhere here. So meaning to say we are going to join to the point where these two meet somewhere here. So this is how we're supposed to have it like this. So meaning to say from this diagram that you are given or from this triangle that you are going to formulate, uh, we are going to see that this is our resultant and this angle here is the one that we refer as our alpha. The theta, they said our argument has to be the argument must be positive in this case, meaning to say we are talking about the theta, that is our argument. So the positive angle is the one that you take in the anti-clockwise direction. So this is the theta that you are supposed to take. Remember I said from the positive real axis, then this way. So meaning to say this is the theta that we need. So our theta, as we can see, it's in the third quadrant. So it is going to be 180 degrees plus alpha. So this is how we are going to obtain your theta. All right, so let's calculate what we are given, guys. Uh, the first thing is the modulus, which is R in this case. So R is the square root of A squared plus B squared, which is we've got negative one here. We've got negative square root of five. So this is going to be negative one squared plus negative uh, square root of five uh, squared like this. So that is going to give us our R in this case, uh, which is going to give us a square root of six. All right, so that's square root of six. Then um, we need uh, alpha. So alpha, like I said, is taken from actan B over A, actan B over A, which is uh, in this case, our B, that is the opposite, which is negative square root of five. So it is going to be actan, negative uh, square root of five over our B, which is a uh, negative one. So that's negative one. So we're going to have actan square root of five in this case, that is our alpha, which is going to be uh, something like 65 comma uh, 905 degrees. All right, so this is what you're going to obtain as our alpha in this case. So now to find the theta now, because we need the theta, we are told that the argument is supposed to be a positive. So therefore, our argument is supposed to be 180 plus alpha. So that is how we are supposed to have our argument. So therefore, our argument is going to be 180 degrees plus alpha, which is uh, 180 degrees plus uh, 65, 905 degrees. All right. So if we add 
to 180 degrees we are finding in this case, or we are determining the positive argument in this case. So our positive argument is going to be 245. So you're going to have 245,905 degrees. If they say that your argument must be negative, meaning to say you're going to take your theta this way, this is where you get a negative angle. All right, so this is it, guys. We have calculated our modulus and we have determined our argument in this case. All right, so this is how we can have it uh, from our polar form. Then the last part of our question was to represent uh, that is take note Z bar, which is our complex conjugate, that complex conjugate and all calculated values in question 2.22, which is this one that we are working from, on the argand diagram. So we need an argand diagram of a polar form, but of our, take note they are saying of our complex conjugate Z bar in this case. So meaning to say uh, that is uh, what we are going to have, 2.23 our Z bar, which is the complex conjugate in a polar form. Remember in polar form, it's R angle theta. So our R in this case, we have it, which is a square root of six. That is our R in this case. Angle of theta, we got our theta as 245,905 degrees. So they want you to present this on the Argand diagram. So remember, I talked about the Argand diagram in a polar form, where we said what is important is the angle to determine the quadrant. Where do we have positive 245 degrees? This lies in the third quadrant, all right? So this lies in the third quadrant. This is our real axis. This is our imaginary axis. So 245 is a positive, meaning to say we are going in the anti-clockwise direction. That's 0, 90, 180, 270. So 245 is just below uh, 270 degrees. So it's just below 270. So this is the angle of, of uh, 245 degrees. So this is our theta, which is uh, 245,905 degrees. And our R, which is being square root of six. So you represent your R being square root of six like this. All right. So this is how you show uh, an Argand diagram in a polar form. As long as you're dealing with a polar form, that is how you present your Argand diagram in this case. So guys, as you can see, the complex numbers is simply uh, an illustration that you need to work from your question papers, work with much question papers as much as you can. So we shall come back again, working with more question papers, working with more revisions. There's a lot that we need to understand just for the basics. This is what we need in our syllabus. Uh, we can answer as much questions as possible. So if, you, if you've got questions, let me know, guys, on the comment section so that you can work on those question papers. Just state the question paper uh, and the year that you are having that question paper. If you've got a question from a, maybe it's a textbook, let us know. From the uh, from the comment section uh from the you can check the email on the description of our channel so that you can send your questions uh there so that you can work them under complex numbers or under any other topic that you have done so that you can use them as part of revision but for now guys that's it from maison african motives working on mathematics info till we meet again